Hello, 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 and welcome to this Friday night live stream. Is it Friday night already? Yes, it is Friday night already. Welcome to Friday night's live stream. Please let me know if you can hear and see me. I hope that you can. Uh, my name is Natalie. I'm a criminal defense attorney. I, You know what? I forgot to mention to you guys in a while. It's been a while since I've said this. I've been a criminal defense attorney for almost 12 years now, over 10, almost 12. Has it been 12? Can't do math. Um, <laughs> that's why I'm a lawyer, because I can't do math. And um, yeah, so this is day, day in hell of the Daryl Brooks trial, day 12. It is horrible. It, you know, today has just been really, really bad in this trial. There is no other way to put it. It's quite horrible. I, let me get, so I'm a little too close. I say, I stay like up on the camera. If people keep telling me like, you're too close to the camera, it's hard not to do. So anyway, we are on day 12 of the trial. It is a mess, a hot mess.com. I mean, I really feel like we can kind of get through some highlights, lowlights of where the trial has been thus far, uh, because there had to be so many uh, you know, breaks taken uh, because Mr. Brooks is determined to obstruct the proceedings so that he doesn't get to the inevitable conclusion, which is the jury rendering its verdict. So if you are excited for my commentary on this, I'm going to see how far I can go. I am going to purposefully not run myself into lawn lumber. He is going to be starting at eight o'clock. So I'm going to get in at into this like right now, right, right now. And this stream is going to redirect to his Friday night frenzy where he's going to be talking about this good old case. So yes, like I said, it is a hot mess. It is terrible. I'm a little tired. So I'm trying to like, mm -hmm. you know, pet myself up with some caffeine, but I'm a bit sleepy. So I'm hoping to, you know, get some energy and some life from you guys. And the way that you give me energy in life is to take off your shoes and like the video. Make sure that you like the video as you're coming in. That way that you, if you do it once you come in, you don't have to forget, right? There's no way you'll possibly forget because you're liking the video right now. All right, give me one second, guys. Let me just take care of some more housekeeping stuff. While I'm taking care of this housekeeping stuff, why don't you guys um, tell me what was the favorite thing that you've eaten all this week? You guys know, oh shit, hold on. God damn it. Ooh. You guys know that I'm a foodie. The girl loves to eat. Um, but yeah, make sure that you guys tell me I'm just taking care of some housekeeping stuff. And while I'm doing that, tell me where you guys are coming from. Tell me where you're coming from. Because, yeah, we are going to get started here real, real soon. Real, real, real soon. Um, do, 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 do. Uh, Okay, I think that's just about everybody. Uh, one more thing. Sorry, I'm just doing some little back end things. You guys are going to proceed to make me hungry. <laughs> um, hold tight for me, guys. I'm sorry. I'm having like a little bit of a glitch, but that's okay. That's how it goes. Isn't that how it always goes? I got a copyright claim on my, you guys are always interested when I tell you guys about this. It's not even really a complaint on my end. You know, it's, it's annoying to get copyright claims, um, especially because they can impact your channel depending on how they classify the copyright claim. But, you know, I got this copyright claim for my Nicholas Cruz video for the portion where the dad is giving his interview um, at the press junket. 
And, you know, I think it falls within fair use because I stop his interview. I com- I provide commentary over it. I talk about it. And, um, you know, so I disputed the copyright claim because I genuinely think it's fair use. But just because of like a two to three minute segment um, <laughs> of this you know, news station who wasn't the only one there during the press conference. But just because of that, um, they um, copyright struck struck my video. The whole, like all of the monetization goes to um, this news station because of two minutes of my video. And, you know, I don't, I'm not really mad about that. You know, I hope that they fix it. Because I'll take the video down instead of monetizing for someone else. I hope they fix it. But, you know, I do hope that sometime in the future they come up with something better than what they're currently doing right now. Um, So today was the craziest day. Um, Nate, if you're interested, I sent you a link if you want it. Um, Okay. Let's go. Let's get right into the foolishness. Uh... Let's get right into it because it's a mess and we've got a bunch of new members. I want to welcome you all to the lawyer chicklets. You guys know at the end of the stream, I'll go through all of these individually, but let me make sure that I star them so that we can see them for later. Okay. Nice, nice, nice. So, you know, this is usually the stuff I would be doing on the back end, but I was running late today. So now you're just seeing me doing back end stuff real quick. Sorry about that. Yeah, I know. I know it's still going on. I know it's still happening. I know it's just pure madness. We are going to pick up from the top because I, maybe like some of you, was working today. I was working quite a bit. And so I did not have the time to sit down and watch the entire thing, but I saw a lot of what I did see, and it was disturbing. So we start off right away with a bunch of foolishness. I mean, it's just horrible. I I don't know how else to put it. I'm gonna mute myself, let's go. I object to that ruling, Your Honor. Noted for the record. Present (laughs) Present this morning, Your Honor. I would like legal finding effect. Tonight. Your Honor, consistent with the court's instruction yesterday afternoon, we have present Douglas Kohler, Detective Steve Guth, and Erica Patterson are here now and available. All right. All right. I expect you to call those first three before we get to any other person, not whatever order you want among the three, but uh, those will be the three people called and then we'll get to the next people according to the scheduling that I uh, put in place yesterday. I want to uh, state for the record that uh, I intend to appeal that judicial decision made about the motion to dismiss. Noted for the record. All right. Let's bring the jury out then. Um, actually, you didn't address subject matter jurisdiction. It still has yet to be proven for the record. And I wanted to address the fact that with this, um, this. I need to speed through this part. I really, really do because what comes up right after this is absolutely bonkers. But she has, in case you're not familiar, the judge has addressed subject matter jurisdiction in a written ruling in which she found that the court does have subject matter jurisdiction because it does, because this is, you know, the trial court and criminal cases in every state is dealt with first at the trial court level. So this is definitely within her subject matter jurisdiction. Um, And she addressed that to him, provided him with a written ruling, told him to read the ruling, and he tore it up in open court. So he clearly does not care about the issue of subject matter jurisdiction. He just wants to delay, 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 delay. Is it Kohler? Is that how you pronounce the name? Kohler? We're going to continue with the witnesses. I, I address subject matter jurisdiction repeatedly. There's a written decision. I stand behind it. You have three witnesses that you subpoenaed. The state made arrangements for them to be here. Whatever order you want to call them in this morning is fine, but those three are here. That's what I was trying to address right now. I was asking okay, about go ahead. the name. What do you want to address? The, the, the Kohler, how do you pronounce the name? Kohler, Kohler. I'm still I don't having know, you'll trouble. you'll have to ask the witness. I'm still having trouble finding the file for, for that particular witness. Um, yeah, call the jury in. 
So I don't, I don't know how I'm supposed to. Mr. Brooks, you were well advised. These are your witnesses that the state made arrangements. You knew who was going to be called. I put that on the record yesterday. So of those three, however, whatever order you want, but I'm not moving past those three. I didn't, to say jump any, to others. I didn't say anything about moving past the three. I know that I, I just set the tone for today that we're going to keep moving. Okay. I Thanks, Miss Mandy. I'm not ready to ask that witness questions sure. if I can't even find the, uh, I understand, the paperwork. But that's you not having your paperwork's on you, not anybody else. So what am I supposed to ask him? I, I can't answer that, sir. You, you know that. That's a rush to judgment. You can't rush mm -hmm. me to judgment when I'm notified. It is not a rush to judgment that the judge does not coach you on what questions to ask your witnesses. The fact that you are unprepared for trial is no one's problem but your own. Your attorneys were prepared for trial and he purposely let them go. All of these um, on review at the appellate court level, the judge will be found to be correct on these issues. Find the court that I cannot find the record. Well, you did I can't very find, well yesterday I can't find without file your file. That. So I'm saying I, that I particular witness. I just, I'll make a record. Yesterday, you asked a question. The, hold on a second. Can you have them step back out for a second? Yesterday, you did said you did not have a file for one of the witnesses, and you did a that fine was, job from my perspective. So I did what? You did a fine job. I just yeah, want to say they, my assessment. They also you did provided a good job. me with one sheet for that particular uh, witness at that time. Okay. So I'm I just went off the of that three in. paragraphs. How you're prepared or not is solely on you, sir. You've had all of this information. Now we're at the end of the third week of trial. These are your witnesses. I presume that you are prepared in whatever way that is. How you're can not I be prepared for? I'm not. So the witness is just supposed to get up there and just, I'm just no, like, I, yeah. I'm not uh, going to have this commentary. Okay, I'm done. The jury's coming out. Be prepared to call So one that's, of the that's three. a rush to judgment. That is not a rush to judgment. It is a rush Again, to judgment. It's clearly in. a rush to judgment if I'm telling you that I don't have the no, file. Right. In my How opinion, am I supposed you're attempting to delay. So no, I'm not. I'm not attempting to delay nothing. You want to come check the boxes yourself? He is yelling at the judge in front of the jury. The jury is coming in. I'm sure even if they haven't entered the room yet, they are at least right behind that door and they can hear what's going on. I would pause it. They can hear what's going on. What a foolish move. I mean, just absolutely foolish to scream at the judge in the midst of your trial and to prejudice yourself in the eyes of the jury. You always trying to pull some fast, fast maneuvers. Mr. Brooks. And uh, Miss Judge, Your Honor. Mr. Brooks, the jury's coming in. Yeah, Show and they, respect they, to they the deserve jury. to know this too. It's still issues that need to get addressed. We didn't even address everything. Mr. Brooks, I addressed all of the issues. No, I still know. had another one that didn't have nothing to do with nothing we just talked about. All there right. was a whole nother issue that needed to be addressed that I needed to and bring we'll on the record later. to your attention. We'll, we'll address it later. It needs to get addressed now before we go any further because it's, it's an important matter. Just like the subject matter jurisdiction is important that hasn't been proven on the record. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, just like the rush to judge time for evidence to be presented or arguments to be made by the parties. I can't even the jury present any evidence. You won't disregard let me put any evidence in the record. All of these statements made by Mr. Brooks That's at this unfair. time. <laughs> All right. That's unfair what the you're doing. The court will address legal matters outside the Then presence. we need Everyone to address the legal seated. matter that I was trying to get to and before you, you rush everything out. you may call your next out. witness, sir. I'm not calling any witness until I get an answer, Your Honor. You're a public servant. Mr. You're Brooks. Suppo you're supposed to be able to answer simple questions. Mr. Brooks. If I'm saying I have to bring call it to your Call your next attention. witness, please. That's the state. I don't need to say what he's doing, right? It's so clear what he's doing. He does not want to deal with the consequences of his actions. But the problem here is that this is the time, in my opinion, for the judge to make the finding, you're disrupting the proceedings, you'll be removed from the courtroom. It's time for him to be removed. The jury is right there watching him act a total fool. And it's just completely disrupting the proceedings. He needs to be removed from the courtroom at this point. It doesn't go any any further, any it doesn't go any deeper than that. He needs to get out of the courtroom.
because he is determined to disrupt the proceedings because he is afraid of what is about to happen. This is horrible behavior. Unfortunately, it's not the first time I was telling Mike, I've seen someone act like this in court. It never turns out well for the defendant. It never turns out well for the defendant. It just doesn't. I have to bring it to your attention, Your Honor. Mr. Brunson, I'm really seeking to bring the issue to your attention. I'm telling you to please, I'm asking you to please stop. And I'm asking you Because we have the jury present. I'm asking you. And we need to continue with the evidentiary phase of this trial. Call your next witness. I'm asking you to address a legal matter. As you said, that those have to be taken up outside of the Remove him from the courtroom. Get him out of there. legal matter that needed to be addressed beforehand I so we do don't it. have to take up time, I will do it at time the next break. afterwards to address something that needs to be addressed now. That way, Mr. the Brooks, court and you yourself for the third are on time, notice. I will address it at the next break. Call your next. I'm so offended. And when he tries to pretend like he's being rational, well, you know, I just want to address it now so that we don't, you don't get to determine that. That's the judge's responsibility to determine when things are addressed in court. You make your record as you've done. You note your objection as you've done. You do not argue past the ruling. The ruling has been made. It's over. Let it go. He is pretending like he's being reasonable when he is completely disrupting the proceedings. Next witness, please. Are you asking me? I'm directing you to call your next witness. Your Honor, I'm, we're not going to move past this. Seeing as how you took an oath to protect the Constitution, I have how your oath. dare I'm you tell her oath. what you're not going to move right past? Here. You don't control the courtroom. The oath that you took, Your Honor. Mr. Brooks, I'd like to continue with testimony. To we have witnesses waiting the, for you. Please call your next witness. The oath that you swore to protect the Constitution, which you are now not doing. Mr. Brooks, so you're going call against your, next your witness, sworn please. oath. You're going against your sworn oath. Mr. Brooks, call your next as you, witness. As you, as you notify the jury every time when there's legal matters, we take them out, out outside of their presence. And we're going to take the testimony right now. Call your next I witness. I merely seek to put you on notice on the record for something that needs to be brought to your attention and, and to will, the court's attention. And I will address it That's at the next That's what I'm really seeking to do. It's something that shouldn't have to wait because it'll take a valuable time later. At least if I notify you right from the onset, you'll already know what we're looking at. This part went on too long. Remove him from the, remove the jury, remove him from the courtroom, resume the proceedings, ask him to call his next witness. If he refuses, start the procedure of saying he's waived his defense. But she, she doesn't want to do that. And I'll talk about that more later. She doesn't want him to waive his defense. She wants to give him every opportunity to present his own case. We are so frustrated watching this, but she is protecting the record. She's protecting the potential conviction. She's protecting his rights. And we can nip it in the bud before everything starts to roll. And Mr. Brooks, it over, it I overlooked. will address it at the next break. If you want to write something down, that's fine and give it to my clerk. I have nothing in writing. Um, I know there's witnesses available and ready to go. Call your next witness. Your Honor, this... Uh, your Honor, you have to answer this question. That's you're Mr. making Brooks, a judicial determination. Call to your next witness, judgment. please. You're rushing me to judgment, Your Honor. There's no rush to judgment. There is here, a sir. rush to judgment. If you won't address a legal issue that I informed you that I had some legal issues that needed to be addressed before you just run right past that, Your Honor. You're a public Mr. Brooks, servant. Are you not a public servant? It is nine thirty-seven. Call it is eight thirty-seven. Sorry, eight thirty-seven. You're right. Call your next witness, Your Honor. You're rushing me to judgment. There, there's no rush to judgment. Call your next witness. We had please. a legal matter that needed to be addressed, and I'm merely trying to and notify I'm the court. Telling you I'm the denying onset. your request to address it at this moment. Call your next witness. You said what? I'm denying your request to address it at this moment. Please how call. Can, how can you please? deny something that we're supposed to do before Mr. Brooks comes out? <laughs> call your witness. I'm not, I'm not seeking to be disruptive. I'm just seeking to understand why we all we do this. Everyone every is in the courtroom waiting. Please, please, please call your next right. witness. He's clearly He's seeking going. to be disruptive. Exactly. Exactly. So I'm, I'm simply trying to make sure. Everything with Mr. Brooks is opposite world. Oh, I'm not being disrespectful as he's disrespectful. I'm not seeking to be disruptive as he's being disruptive. 
I don't want to upset you, Your Honor, as he stares the judge down and slams his hand on the table. He does things and then says the opposite of what he does. And I wonder how, especially now that the jury is in the room watching this, I wonder how the jury will take how one thing comes out of his mouth, but the actions are completely different. How they'll take that in relation to any defense he raises as to him not being the driver or not intending to have hit all those people. Because his words are incongruous with his actions. And they're only supposed to be considering the facts, but he's going out of his way to prejudice them with man matters outside of what they should be considering on his own accord. Sure that the court is notified. Of Put it in writing, get judged. it to the bailiff, and if I deem it important enough to interrupt the witness, I will but call your next witness. How can I I cannot call a witness and write something that you do? You can take a minute to write down what it is. This I'm not asking you why to... I needed to be addressed beforehand. <coughs> Mr. Brooks, that way the jury is remaining in this courtroom. Call your next witness, please. Your Honor, you're rushing me to judgment. There's no rush to judgment, sir. Are you are you not a public servant, Your Honor? Mr. Brooks, do I not have your oath of, of under 90611? 11, this court has the authority, as you do know, I not have call it's not a copy or I asked for certified copies that you said on record that you would not provide for, for no good reason. That these are three, sir, three of your you are doing this. Right and I've repeatedly told you, you can see the juries here. You're, You're doing, doing this. I, I, listen, I, we need to go I'm forward. Not attempting, I'm not attempting to delay the proceedings. I'm not attempting to be disruptive. Liar. To notify your honor in the court for the record before hand. That way, everyone's at least on notice of the issues that need to be taken up instead of waiting until a break or a lunch and, and things of that nature, which kills my valuable discretion, time. It's my authority. It's the courtroom that I'm You're presiding honor. over. I'm not going to address is that this, at is, this moment. Is this not your I'm not going to answer questions. Did you not questions. swear as a public servant that you would protect Mr. the United Brooks, States Constitution? Call Did you not do that witness. three times? I have all of you here. Your oath, Your Honor, as a public servant. And Mr. now Brooks, you're rushing me to judgment. There's no rush and I'm doing judgment. things lawfully by trying to notify you and notify the court of issues that need to be addressed Mr. Brooks, beforehand. We are These in the are evidentiary issues. phase of this trial. Your Honor, call your next witness. You're rushing me to judgment, Your Honor. And I object I'm to that. I'm aware of three witnesses object, who are here. Call one of them, please. Your Honor, I object to that. Your objection's no and, and I want a legal reconsideration of your ruling. If not, I'll, I reject that ruling and take exception to that ruling. I understand. I request a legal or a factual basis for your ruling, a written judicial finding of fact and conclusion of law for your ruling. And if not that, interlocutory declaratory appeal for this matter. And if not, these needs need to be stayed until this matter is before a uh, adjudicated court. I would never want to be in this judge's position. So, you know, I think a lot of us need to be, you know, temper our criticism of the judge, even though we're frustrated because she has a lot of different policy issues to consider when dealing with Mr. Brooks. But I would suggest that with hindsight being 2020 and us Sunday, uh, Monday morning quarterbacking this whole thing, <laughs> even we're not in the courtroom, we're not making the decision, we're not judges, right? But I really, in my opinion, think it would have been a good idea to stop the proceedings right there, remove the jury, and then put Mr. Brooks in another room and ask him on the record if he intends to call another witness and then undertake to to say basically he's waived his right to a defense you know because this this is this is ridiculous this is ridiculous of competent jurisdiction because we have not proven jurisdiction in this court as of yet subject matter jurisdiction has not even been proven on the record your honor i don't even know the true nature and cause Mr. of the Brooks, charges against me i don't even understand that part i understand of it. I haven't your been request provided a complaint i haven't your Honor, there's there's so many issues. Mr. Brooks, I'm not we will take. I'm not attempting to, Mr. Brooks, to, to be disrespectful in any way. We I'm need to continue. To the Your requests are denied. Your Honor, I, I and I'm going to instruct the jury that. at this point to I disregard and not consider that, any Honor. of what has just happened since you walked in. It should not be held against Mr. Brooks in any way. Um, these are legal issues that this court may or may not need to address, but they do not bear in any way on ultimately the issues that these that you as jurors will have to decide. And I'm instructing you. Uh, I'm, to disregard uh, what you have just heard and seen. Your Honor, with, with everything that I just said, be part, be made part of the record. It's on the record. I'm telling the jury that it shouldn't affect anything that they're doing in any way. Your Honor, it's a with rush that, to, it's a rush to judgment. Mr. Brooks. Because, Your Honor, I just showed your oath that you swore to. He just you doesn't listen. He just, you does, not listen. He just does not listen. You, you took these oath of offices. You did, Your Honor, three of them. 
I understand which, my which is very, very commendable that you know that you decided to be a public servant in this in these in, in these type of matters, Your Honor. I, I respect it to the fullest, but also it you, you have to uphold these oaths. All right, I'm going to have to excuse Your the Honor. jury since Mr. Brooks uh, is not calling his witness. She should have excused to, them 15, 20 minutes ago. Also, this is ridiculous. I respect you being a public servant. He's a liar. He affects nothing. You in any way. But these, these issues Brooks, that I have, please they stop. need to be addressed. They need I'm to excusing be. the jury. Can you please stop? Your Honor, this is a rest of judgment. This is a clear, this is a clear bias. Mr. Brooks, you are to stop talking. Are you asking me? I'm advising you or you will forfeit your right to be present in this so courtroom for the contempt. questioning of your first witness. Because so you're holding me in contempt. I'm not holding you in contempt. Then how can you remove me from uh, the courtroom when I haven't given consent? Mr. Brooks, I'm advising you at this moment to call your next witness or you will forfeit the right to call these witnesses. She can remove you from the courtroom because that's her authority as a judge. She has that authority you don't. She has the power you don't. This is not a quid pro quo relationship. This is not a share of power. She has the authority and you don't. You can't, you can't uh, take under 906 right. 11. You, you are cannot, refusing you cannot, to call cannot, a witness. I didn't refuse anything, Your Honor. You can't, you can't deny me my Sixth Amendment right, which is Mr. To Brooks. Call do you want to be present in this courtroom while you question your first witness? Because it is now 8 44 and you've consistently talked in front of the jury who's no longer in this courtroom on issues that you have been advised and are fully aware are not relevant to their determination despite what you this, believe the law didn't have anything is to do with the subject jury, matter jurors no you that's what that is what you referenced in front of the jury and then you referenced my the issues that I was subject matter raise. jurisdiction as you know is not as something I don't know. the state has to be the state it must has to prove be it has to be and you are frankly confusing me civil law. jurisdiction law, in federal right. cases with criminal court jurisdiction in the state of Wisconsin. You don't have criminal. That you has don't been made have, abundantly You don't clear. have subject matter jurisdiction or personal jurisdiction. Mr. Brooks. Or personal jurisdiction. You don't. You haven't proved You it. have not. You I have it is nonsense. It is nonsense what he keeps yelling about subject matter jurisdiction. It's like, it's just such nonsense. A criminal case arising in that county, the trial level court has jurisdiction over it. Period. Period. This is not a multi-jurisdictional issue. It happened in Waukesha County. It happened in the state of uh, Minnesota. It's Minnesota. Wisconsin. Wisconsin. It happened in Waukesha County, Wisconsin. I'm so tired. You know, and so this judge has jurisdiction. There's just no question about it. And he cannot let go that his sovereign citizen nonsense just does not work. I, I, I need to. It's just it's infuriating. It's infuriating. I excuse the jury. I'll give you the opportunity to raise whatever issue it was, but you need to do it now or we're moving forward. That's what I want to do. That's what so, I was attempting to do. And if you interrupt me one more time, you're going to go do it from the other courtroom. And, and because so you're, you're being All right. I'm, he can go to the other courtroom and we will address these issues because are you, you are consent? not being respectful. You are disruptive. You are interrupting. I will give you one more opportunity. Don't interrupt me again. Don't roll your eyes at me. Don't sigh at me. Don't give him any more opportunities. Minutes because of your nonstop commentary. I'm going to sit down and I'm going to listen to you. What issues do you want to raise? Runko! Hey, how are you doing? No, because that's not what's relevant. I'm great. You don't need to make an offer of proof. Tell me what the issue is. You okay. said you have a legal issue you want to raise before we get going. What is that issue? Okay. The legal issue is this. Uh, Detective Casey yesterday testified for the second time under oath in uh, reference to exhibits 13 and 14 that show the backyard of my mother's home, which he stated that he had been to the home, had seen the backyard, and all this stuff, when he did not, in fact, even speak with my mother. It was brought to my attention that... My mother, in fact, never speaks, spoke to any law enforcement from Waukesha. Would you like to add her to your witness list to call her? Yes, I would. All right, that's because fine. She's that's willing, we'll she's willing that. to come. But that's not something we needed to address. This it, it needs right to away, be addressed because, because of the issue of the subpoena. That's the reason why I needed to be addressed. That's the reason why I was trying to attempt to it bring it to It could have been done attention. on a break. All right, so well, I be, you're putting, I have, you, you would like, you're <laughs> asking me to add Don Woods to the witness list for you. 
Yes, but I also have a question of, about the subpoena. The subpoena for whom? For, for my mother. But I would also like to subpoena the phone record so it can be made part of the record of the conversation. First of all, hey, Ian, nice to see you. Hey, how are you doing? I am great. I'm I'm real, real good. Just tired. How are you? Oh, also tired and annoyed at my government, but uh, that's, I guess, the usual thing. Yeah. They're uh, trying to ban uh, handgun transfers. Well, they have banned handgun transfers within Canada, so that's annoying. But... Uh, I saw you tweeting about that. Yeah, they're uh, they're obnoxious, but uh, mm. hopefully this uh, particular set doesn't stay in power for too much longer because they're just uh, looking to cause all sorts of things. Uh, mm -hmm. One of the things they've got planned is uh, messing up uh, YouTube as well. So oh, nice. that <laughs> directly threatens me. So we'll see. But uh -oh. uh, yeah. Are we going? Are we going to get Runkle the politician one day to rail against oh. the foolishness? Oh Change God! Some things? No. no. <laughs> yeah, no, not me either. It's terrifying. Um, back to Mr. Brooks. The, the problem with politics is that you have to spend time with politicians if you do yeah. that. Yeah. And if so, I mean, I might rather spend time with Mr. Brooks, honestly. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> Never that, never that. I, I needed a breather from Mr. Brooks, so I'm glad that we got to talk to you, Ian. <laughs> Guys, go subscribe to Runkle of the Bailey, um, amazing Canadian defense attorney. Um, this is, this is. I don't even know what else to say right now. It's just driving me insane. His intent to delay is so clear. I, I seriously cannot take it anymore. I'm gonna pick up. Um, let's keep going. What does he think he's gonna get out of a delay? Um, you know, everyone keeps asking me that question. And from my perspective, it's really, you know, a lot better not to be a six time convicted murderer. You know, if you are getting multiple bites at the apple for, uh, for trial, maybe you hope some of the witnesses disappear for whatever reasons, like, you know, death or illness, and they don't come in. Um, you run hope, over by a car, run over by a car. <laughs> you hope that, uh, you know, the prosecution changes, uh, changes up and then you get a new prosecutor who's not as familiar with the case. Uh, people try to delay their trials, uh, for all types of reasons because they don't want to face the music. And he, I don't think he's much of a planner. Okay. Although I think his behavior is calculated, I don't think he's really thinking about what the future holds for him other than I don't want to be found guilty, you know? And so Fair. I'm going to try my best to avoid being found guilty. Find, found guilty feels bad. So avoid, avoid, avoid. Right. Um, yeah, it, no. it, it's just, it's just disgusting. Okay. Let's pick up with, with Mr. Brooks because he's acting a, a plum fool. <laughs> and, and we're we're back in time, Runkle. This is it towards the beginning of the day. Well, that works for me. It's the prosecution listens to all the phone calls. They should be able to have heard that phone call as well. So they should be on notice of what was said. I don't know what phone call you're referring to. If you're referring, referring to, to a, a jail phone call. Phone call from, I'm then... referring to a jail phone call that was made last night, October 20th, between 7.54 p.m. and 8.10 p.m which I'm sure the prosecution has heard by now. And it also brings up the issue of perjury testimony. Sir, the, the, the way that you will address the issues that you're talking about are to call witnesses to challenge that or to present the evidence in support of your position. If you're telling me you need to add Dawn Woods to the witness list, I approve of that. Um, you can fill out a subpoena and I'll direct the state to serve that upon her and at the appropriate time we'll have her brought will indicate when in the order of folks she can be brought in. So I'll grant that request. In terms of the jail records, uh, you'll have to subpoena the appropriate custodian or a witness who can testify to that. That's that's what I was trying to gain knowledge of. Well, I, I can't I give you advice on that. I'm story. not trying to ask for advice. I was asking, is, is, can I, is that That's asking me for, I can't direct how you do that. I can't tell you how to do that. Um, you are acting as your own attorney and you uh, will need to figure that out. So. You have the subpoena Wouldn't forms. Wouldn't it be useful to have a lawyer um, to help? You can research the issues. You have access to legal research. It would have been really, really great if he'd had some really experienced public defenders. Yeah. Is that subpoena forms? Thank you. 
Is there any other witnesses you're asking to add to your, uh, and, and you can also call Detective Casey if you want, just so you know. <laughs> so that I make three times he's able to testify? If you believe he has information that he hasn't testified to, I will give you permission to call him as well. No, I don't think it'd be necessary. You know, you know, you know what he did. Well, in any event, you know what he did not do. we're going to bring the jury yeah. back out. And then I expect you to call a witness. And what, and just so I'm clear, because I was trying to get to that issue, what witnesses are here? Because I, I don't have the, uh, I don't have any, any paperwork for it. Uh, Kohler, 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 I, I don't know. Douglas Kohler, it. Stephen Goose, and Erica Patterson. Of those three, I expect you to call one of those witnesses. I accept the value in return for value this document. More sovereign citizen nonsense that he parrots over and over again during the trial. Whenever he's handed a document, I accept for value, I return for value because he thinks he wants to pretend like he's in some type of civil proceeding where he thinks that everything is, he's contracting with them on this special appearance. It's bull crap. It has absolutely no bearing. Those magic words are bunk. I, I accept for value, return for value. He sounds like a, a just a complete nincompoop every single time he says that. Yeah, these guys think that they've got these magic words that help them, and you just sound like an idiot. He's claiming he does not have it. Since I, I know that I don't have it. So let's make that record correct. You don't have it with you in the courtroom is what you're saying. I can't find it anywhere. You've had it previously. Yes, I had it at one point. All right. Are you ready to proceed forward, Mr. Brooks? Yes. All right, let's bring the jury out. I'm, I'm skipping through this witness, guys, because he's going to act up some more. And I feel like really this is about the highlights of him just acting a plum fool. So let's go there <laughs> or at least closer to there, because this particular witness is not, you know, when he knows he has to go through with these witnesses, it's not the worst of his behavior. When he has the witnesses in front of him, he asks, uh, you know, some pretty salient questions, even though he's not quite sure how to do an impeachment. You know, he asked some pretty salient questions. It's in between when he's trying to delay before the next witness comes on. That's where the real meat and potatoes are. It's kind of sad because he might actually be able to do a decent job if he was not being an idiot and had some training. Like, he's not an He's not stupid per se. Yeah. He's just doing dumb things. And if he'd actually gone to law school, he could have actually had some talent. Because sometimes when I see him asking questions, I'm like, he's going somewhere with it. Oh, no, he doesn't know how to. Yeah, exactly. He has an inclination, but he doesn't know how to get there. Right. He doesn't yeah. know how to get there. Okay. Um, like I said, I'm 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 not going to go through every little thing. The one the, the one. There's two directs I'm going to cover. One of them is the direct of the of the ex girlfriend, Miss Patterson. I want to have a seat, then. Please call your next witness. Who determined this order? Mr. Brooks, I'll <laughs> take up that issue outside the presence of the jury later. If there's a witness available. Please call the witness. That's not the witness that was intended to be called at this time. I understand that, sir. Under 90611, I have the authority and the discretion on that. So please call the witness who's available. So I'm being rushed to jail. <laughs> no, sir. I'm trying to have an effective and efficient use of all of our time. We, so please call which, the which, witness. Which is respected, but at the same time, being this, that this is my time. Right, I'm going to excuse my the jury. Get right the now. jury out. Yep. Hold there we go. The jury, please. So the thing she did that really I I, I had mo most of a problem with was earlier in the day, he was ranting and the jury was in there and it went on for like maybe 10 or 15 minutes and she didn't remove the jury. You know, I think she should have removed the jury and gotten him out of the courtroom 
and put him in, you know, the other courtroom. I, I just, I did not like that. He was just going on and on and on. Still, I think he'd have a hard time arguing anything, you know, that, that that's a bias against him. I think he'd have a hard time making that into an appellate issue. He generated his own bias. There's nothing he can argue. Yep. It's like, oh, that was your doing? Okay, well, too bad. All right, thank you. Be seated. Mr. Brooks, under 90611, I do have the authority and just my inherent authority over this case to um, require you to call the next available witness. Um, you, in my opinion, were not entirely cooperative yesterday with the process. And so I told you um, that uh, three witnesses would come in at 830, two would come in at 1030, two would come in at 1.30, two would come in at 3.30, and then if there were any left, with, I wasn't sure if there were or not, uh, would come in at 4. You also didn't provide me with that with that list. Uh, you were advised on the record, but sir. But you didn't, you, didn't, you didn't provide it to me. Sir, you chose not to write down, so that's on you, not me. Nah, that's, so no, you here's can't, the that's thing. Erica Patterson is here, so I'm advising you that she will be the next witness that you call if you so choose. If you choose not to call her right now, then I'm releasing her from the subpoena because we have almost 45 minutes until 1030, just slightly under that. And there's no reason for you not to call her. Be She's on your list. She was on the, the, the listing as I understand it, the groupings of three, Tuesday that morning, Tuesday it. afternoon, Did Wednesday morning, it? Wednesday afternoon, and so on and so forth. That's the order. I told you very specifically, I'm not going to have everyone come in at one time because uh, that's not efficient. That's not effective. And it's not courteous to them. Um, people have families, people have jobs and other responsibilities. And we're trying to be mindful of all of that as well while having the state assist you in getting these people here. Um, so I'm advising you that if you don't call her right now, you will forfeit your right to call her. Is that lawful law? Sir, I believe I have the authority to do that. She's here, she's ready to I'm, go, I'm just she's your witness. I'm just asking the question, is that lawful law? I have the authority under 9611 and other. Uh, he wants her to answer his nonsense phrases. Control the order. Is that lawful law? Your Honor, why is it always so hard to just say yes or no? Is yes. it like because she's explaining, and if she didn't, ex if she just said uh, yes or no, he'd say grounds. <laughs> right, and, and and also because built into the question is a falsehood, always with him. Always yes. built into the question is a, is that lawful law? That is a nonsense phrase. That means nothing. That might mean something to you as a sovereign citizen, but she, she has effectually said, you know, I have the authority to do this. This is what I'm going to do. Is that lawful law? I love the comment in the uh, chat. Is that fishy fish? <laughs> <laughs> lawful law. Have the authority, sir. I'm not disputing that. You just I'm not disputing. Not say I asked the question. Is it lawful law? Sir, I told you what I believe my authority is. Okay. You, you don't me want to you, recognize it. That's you fine. You want to object and note it. That's you fine. Your authority. Your I'm, not, I'm not debating your authority. I'm not. So, what? It, so I will address one other issue with you because you said you had an issue regarding the last witness, which is fine. We can address that quickly. And then I'm going to have the jury brought in and, um, that will be your opportunity to that's, call. That's a misdirect. Patterson. That's a misdirect. What issue did I say I had with the You last? said you wanted to raise said, an issue with detect about detective What I said was testimony. I might have more correct more questions for that witness. I didn't say it was an issue. Oh, I didn't hear that, sir. You you had your opportunity to ask the witness questions. He's been released. Your Honor, if I mumble something under my breath, somehow that's audible. But when I talk clearly, somehow does I mean hears missed me. it, but. I heard what I interpreted was when you said I may have an, an issue with this witness. I, I didn't understand. I guess I didn't take that as you were going to reserve your right to recall him. He's so fucking rude and it makes me angry. It makes oh, me so you, the facial expressions. Look at his face. It makes you me. This is a lawyer. Oh, oh contempt. And yep. see, we're not actively in jail while we're in court. So that would actually mean something to us. We then go to jail. So yeah. <laughs> and that's the problem is that he has nothing to lose, guys. That's why it's hard to manage him in court. 
hold him in contempt. What? He's already in jail. It, it won't change anything. The you judge, can't. And he's going to be in jail for ever. Forever. So which, he has nothing to lose. He has no incentive to. So, oh, behave with the process so that he can, uh, you know, easily go to prison. No, he's going to go down kicking and screaming. That's what he's doing. He has no incentive to behave himself because he's going to spend the rest of his life in prison. And that's it. They need, they need to give this judge a spray bottle. Yes. So can, uh... <laughs> yes. Perfect. What would so are you telling me you'd like to reserve your right to recall Detective Goof? Yes. All right. Then that will be noted. And we'll keep him under the subpoena. Now, that should address that. I'll have the jury brought back in, and you should be prepared if you choose to call Ms. Patterson. This is your opportunity to do it. <laughs> At the same time, though, that's still a rest of judgment, Your Honor. You can't, I should be, I should be forced to call people in the order that I'm being told to when these are my witnesses. My you, would, you did not want to provide us with the order, and I respected but, that, Mr. Brooks. I, but I said that. And so the then I then I asked Your Honor, with all respect, with all respect, did I did I not inform Your Honor in the court that I would not give a specific order? I, I stated that numerous times. And Mr. Brooks, I times. have authority to tell you otherwise. You I may did. not like it. You may I disagree did. with it's, it. It's not, it's not about been, that. It's about the rest of the judgment. You have not been cooperating with this process. The there, state nothing has to cooperate with. agreed to assist you given your custodial status. Okay, and that's and and, I never and asked frankly, them to do any that. Attorney in this I never asked them to do that, Your Honor. Would give us the order. Oh, don't release did them I, from I, that I, obligation. You you didn't ask them to do that. It, 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 that's such a lie and makes me so sick. There have been, oh, well, the state didn't do this when they, when I asked for a subpoena. The state didn't do that when I asked for a It is not the state's obligation to subpoena your witnesses for you. They did you a courtesy and he's complained about it, that they haven't done it to his satisfaction all along. And now he's saying he didn't ask them to do that. If I was the state, I'd be standing up saying, okay, um, I'd just like a direction that he can handle his own subpoenas now. Yep. He can get his <laughs> and, own. Uh, subpoenas for witnesses where he, he doesn't even get their addresses because their addresses are under protective order. Good luck. Good luck. Yep. Like, Damn. what is he trying to do here? Just oppositional defiant. And that, the judge just needs to pull reverse psychology on him. You know, like I said this before, the first day he was in his orange jumpsuit in front of the jury, he refused to put on a suit. If she had just said, well, I, I order you to wear an orange jumpsuit, he would have been in a suit right away. You know? <laughs> it's the it's opposite world with him. Everything must be opposite. Not, that would actually be a funny I, to do that? I did not ask them to do that. They no, volunteered. They, they, they offered, so at the end but, of the day, but we expect if they didn't want to do it, yeah, but that, that wasn't one of the stipulations when they offered to do it, Your Honor. Let's let's be... Let's, no, common courtesy is the stipulation, Okay, sir. but it and, wasn't and stipulated too, so I, I didn't have... You are well advised of how this process was going to go. No, I was not. It is because normal if you, in, a, in a trial you can't to put call the people, witnesses you can't put out of the order based on their availability. For me, Your Honor, come on now. It is, that's a rush to judgment. There's no rush to judgment here. You did the state Did the state yes, have sir, to put their the witnesses? Case. Your Honor, with all, with all due respect, did the state have to put their witnesses in order and tell me? It's irrelevant what the state did. Did, did they have order. to do that? They didn't need your assistance to do that. Did they have to do it? No, they didn't. I didn't have, have to, to be provided it. with. We're going to call this witness at this time. But they're this able witness at this to time. contact their they didn't witnesses. Have to do that, so why should I have to do accommodate that? their schedule? This is not about you. It's not about the state. It's about the witnesses. It's about what's fair. It's about what's fair. No, frankly, sir, it's about you trying to control what's happening in this. Program. How? How? How am I controlling what's happening? I'm the one. Shot. Tell him, Judge. Yes, that's exactly what it's about. He's trying to control what's happening in the courtroom. He cannot control it. And so the only thing that he can do is delay, delay, delay. The thing is, though, she can't let him, you know, make her lose her temper. So she's being very careful. But I'm just whenever I see her starting to push back, I'm like, careful, careful. Yeah, I know. I know. And the thing and it, it wastes so much more time. Like whenever he says, like, this is a rush to judgment. She says, this is not a rush to judgment. Don't even say that. Just ignore. It, uh, that's what I... The number one thing I wish she would do would just ignore him more. She She's, I think, so concerned that he fully understand what's happening, which is what she should be, that she's trying to teach him along the way. She's trying to help him, right? You know, trying to, like, give him little breadcrumbs. And 
you know, to, to send him on his path towards a fair trial. And at every turn, he crushes those breadcrumbs into the ground and scatters <laughs> them to the wind, you know? He does not give a crap. And so it's, like I said yesterday, pearls before swine. It's you're just wasting your time with this guy here. Big time. <sighs> yeah, no, he's the worst. To the table with so a, the with a shock device on my other So, how's I'm trying to control anything? I just this, want this I'm to be fair, to and it hasn't been fair. Mr. Brooks, it's fair. No, it's not. If you, I have to do something that they don't have to do, how's that fair? It's fair Explain to me how that's fair. It's a process that it has been set up to, frankly, help you. Get no, it's, it's not helping me by it's helping, it's helping the state and, no, by being able to say, if we know the time and we know the person not, and we know this, then we can be prepared. So, We'll already be ready. Mr. Brooks, that was the whole aim of that. And I would have had her come in later. You didn't want to answer that question. There was no and question. I, to, it was no question to answer. Uh, I did. I did what you asked me to do, Your Honor. You no, said you yes. You did. You okay. did. You asked me to give them my witness Mr. list. Brooks, I gave them my witness list. Yesterday, it's not. It's not my fault. Very it's not my fault. They weren't going to be prepared to Mr. do Brooks, their. Here's the deal. The jury's cross. coming out, and I'm. I'm going to stand my ground on this. I'm going to stand my ground too, but I'm not, I'm not going to be disrespectful her, or disruptive. I'm just saying I want it to be fair. When the jury comes back out, I'm releasing her from the subpoena. You can't do that. Law, where's the lawful law? Where's the lawful law? I have the right to you witnesses. You have to cooperate with this process. But I sir. also have the right, the six member right. We have a witness available for you to call. I can require it's you to It's not the witness that right should have been called at this time, Your Honor. It is based on the list that you've provided. and, and That didn't have a time They didn't have a time or order. I'm not going to play this game with you, It's not no game. That's what you don't seem to understand. I believe that fully. I don't care what you believe fully. All right. It's not a game. We, I don't take I this as a game. That's what that's what nobody that's what nobody you don't gotta explain nothing to me. Do you want that's what you don't understand? You think you that this is a whole game to me? Question? This is not a game to me, Your Honor. No, nothing about this is a joke. I never that's what y'all don't joke. understand. But and it's unfair, it's unfair, on. and it's disrespectful to me that you think I would come in here purposely and treat this like a joke or a game. I never said it was a what joke. What type what type what type of what type of statement is that? I need a glass. I so I can start the drinking game on this. I'm going to go get a glass of wine in a second. Ian, let's tag team. Go get your glass. I'm going to get my glass. I'm dead <laughs> serious. This is... Guys, I am disturbed. I cannot believe how he is acting right... Again. Again. Remember. <laughs> That not only does the judge, and she has given me every indication that she is going to be fair, that she is going to, you know, protect his rights, that she is not going to hold his disrespect against him. I've gotten every indication of that. However, every judge is at the end of the day, only a human being. And this judge, this human being, not only has the power on all the objections, on the introduction of all of the evidence, the admissibility of all of the evidence. Oh, I'm going to show you what I what I have in a little bit. But yeah, so that looks. What is that, by the way? Uh, that is a uh, Indian single malt whiskey. Hmm. So it's uh, it was given to me as a gift, and it's surprisingly tasty. So I uh, this is that the last of it, unfortunately. Okay, I'm, I'm going to get the brand name from you because my husband likes whiskey. I do not. Um, I'm, uh, if I drink anything, it's wine. I need a glass of wine with this right now. <laughs> oh. It's really... Okay, let me finish my sentence, though. This judge, if he is convicted, you know, that stranger things have happened. So if he is convicted, <laughs> is in charge of the rest of his life, she's going to impose the penalty. She imposes the sentence. And you but look at there, how he's treating her. Is there really a lot of range to this sentence, though? <laughs> like, I feel like this sentence on this one is pretty much all I don't written, know. It, de it depends. It depends on what the jury finds. You know, juries are mystical be mystical bodies you know sometimes things happen yeah. and you're like how did that happen you know they could have quit on some charges and convict on others and then you're looking at something other than life on everything it can happen especially with the witnesses later on who will say things like oh i mean yeah maybe there were three people in the car maybe um you know i the the driver 
uh, veered away from my kids, you know, to go to, it wasn't intentional or whatever the case may be. It was mechanical failure or something, even though there's a witness already said it wasn't mechanical failure, right? You just don't know what's going to raise that reasonable doubt in the jury. I find it extremely unlikely that he will be acquitted. I'm just saying, why set yourself up for failure? (laughs) Why make it worse? Yeah. Jury finds, oh, he was just lost. Mm -hmm. Confused. Right. And so they (laughs) give him some type of negligent charge. And then the judge stacks everything at the max on top of each other. You know, I don't know. I'm in some la la land right now. I'm just saying that, look, why make it worse? Than it already oh, yeah, is. No. It's like gilding well, the it, lily, but for like a shitty situation. I can't think of I can't think of a term for that. <laughs> well, and if you do get an appellate issue, the appellate court is going to read the transcripts of this. Yes. And is gonna be kind of already thinking you're a jerk. And as yeah, much and, as mm-hmm. no, go ahead. As much as people like in law school, you get law students who are like, Oh, well, it should be pure law, and it's like, yeah, but it's law as done by humans. And so, you know, if people think you're a jerk, they're less inclined to rule in your favor. And Uh, conversely, when people think that you're like a genuinely good person who got railroaded by the system, or maybe you made a mistake, but you're really, really good and everything came down too harsh on you, you'll you'll see a little bit of leniency from the courts, you know? And it's just like, he just doesn't have that in his arsenal. That is not something that's available to him. He cannot pretend to be a good person here. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, while this plays, I am going to go get my glass of wine. I shall return. When you when you get back, I've got an important question on all this one. Cause... Okay, great. All right. I'll be back in a sec. Life is not on the line. Mine is. And you think that I, I think this is funny? I don't think it's funny whatsoever. So I, so I think, Your Honor, with all due respect, I think you so should show some respect. So we're going to take a five-minute break. And when we come back, the jury's coming out. And you need to call your next witness. Thank you. We are no, nah, you, you're not rushing me to judgment. I don't care what you're talking about. <laughs> Who do you think you are, sir? I can't even step away. Okay, let me speed you to the next section. I'm just kind of wondering, like, this all started, the initial sort of timeline on this starts with him in a domestic confrontation. So who was in a relationship with this guy and what was that like oh that was erica peterson who he had impregnated when she was 16 years old he is a registered so as a result of that he was in his 20s like 24 or something like that um she she you know uh had a child by him and he has been in her life ever since they've had children together And she uh, was in a woman's shelter at the time that this happened. He was out on bond for previously allegedly abusing her. I don't know what the disposition is of that case, but he had previously assaulted her, according to Waukesha County Police. He was released on bond and he was complaining that she needed allegedly pay. She needed to pay him back for the money that he put up on bond to get out from assaulting her and met up with him. And then he assaults her again and people intervene and he takes off in the SUV and allegedly runs through this parade. Christ, Does it Jesus make sense? Saint. No, exactly. The woman has testified already um, in the state's case. And now he's going to recall her to, in my, in my, and this is, this is who is next. Uh, yeah. Erica was 15 in my, Okay, here's the thing, though. I wonder how old she was when they first started contact because you have to remember, it takes nine months to grow a baby. So, you know, she could have been 14. I don't know. I don't know how old she was when they first started together. But when she had a baby, she was 15, and he was found guilty of, you know, offenses related to a minor. So just super disturbing stuff. Super. Man, this guy is the worst person ever. Yeah, I mean, no redeeming qualities whatsoever here. None. Yeah, I was like, at least somebody can put up with, oh, God, no, that's no. horrifying. No, she's like trying, to, like, I shouldn't say trying to get away from him, but certainly like stuck in the cycle of DV with him, right? And her friends yeah. are trying to keep her away from him. 
And he proceeds to get into a physical altercation with her in front of her friends who try to intervene and save her. And that's when he, you know, when he's interrupted and being able to abuse his, this is my theory, his, his chosen victim, he will go and victimize anybody else. I just think it's all a part of the cycle of DV thing that just blew in the future. People are going to study this. You know, we've in our criminal practices, we've all dealt with intimate partner violence and like the fallout yeah. that can happen from that. You know, this is to me, and I've been spending a lot of time thinking about this case. To me, this is like a buildup in my uneducated opinion on this subject, because I'm not a psychologist. But this is a buildup to like, or this is an expansion on like a family annihilator. You know, those people that commit intimate partner violence over and over again against one person and anything that's done to try to stop them. And like they think they control their entire family. They'll they'll take out the whole family. Right. And this wasn't a family. This was the public. But there was no one else around and there was no way for him to vet his anger. And so the general public was enough. That's what I think of him as in that continuum of behavior, just in my opinion. Well, and at least. uh... At least the state will keep away from her for the sort of foreseeable future. Although the sad right. thing is, is that there's entirely the possibility that she chooses to visit him if he's allowed oh. visitation. I would I would Isn't hope that- not after this. I mean, he treats her on the stand. He treats her terribly, terribly. As a matter of fact, um, after we get through her, her testimony, the prosecutor is going to bring up something about what Mr. Brooks wants to elicit about Miss Miss Peterson or Miss Patterson. And it's just, I think it's horrific. Like he, it, when she did direct testimony, oh, aren't you drunk? Aren't you drunk? And she said, I only had one beer and he's trying to play her as some alcoholic or something like that. And it's clear that like in this, the dynamic of this relationship, he definitely has the control, you know? Yeah. I'm, oh. Okay, let me stop. Okay. All right. Subject matter jurisdiction it still has to be proven for the record. I decline to do so. Your objection is noted. For is the, the audio record. on? Your objection is noted for the record. Is the audio on? Yes, it's on, sir. It's on. So we're not going to address subject matter jurisdiction that has yet to be proven for the record. For the record, I have addressed it. No, you have, have and proven it for the written, record. And your objection is noted for the have record. You proven subject matter jurisdiction for the record. Have you proven it? Has the prosecution proven it? Oh, okay. Yes, they have. Stop this BS. So that's a judicial determination that you don't have to answer that, Your Honor, being a public servant? I was talking to my clerk. I didn't hear what you asked. The jury's coming in. You heard what I asked. I actually did not. Come on, come on, Your Honor. Come on now. Oh, that's sigh. We, we, we got to cut that out. You know you have to prove subject matter jurisdiction. You know that. You have to honor your oath of office. You know that. Ugh. Thank you, everyone. Please be seated. The defense may call its next witness, please. Give me one second. I'm trying to make sure I got the paperwork since I'm being rushed to judgment. I guess in the drinking game, maybe subject matter jurisdiction should be a sip. I've got a little side project on the go here, but it's at the stitching stage. I can see that. Stitching involves no power tools. So. Thank you. We'll have her brought Watch. If you said if you set your drinking game to rush to judgment today, you are dead by now. Yeah. Before <laughs> it was grounds. Now it's rush to judgment. 
it was clear he didn't know what hearsay meant. It was clear he didn't know what grounds meant. So I wonder what he thinks rush to judgment means. To be um, fair, a lot of lawyers don't know what hearsay means. <laughs> yeah, it's a tough concept, isn't it? Like I said, it's a rule like Swiss cheese. It's got so many holes in it. <laughs> oh, but still, I mean, the base of it is not super hard. It's just all of the exceptions and so forth. But mm -hmm. I get lawyers who screw up the like the base concept of it. And it's just mm -hmm. like, no. He said a honking horn was hearsay. I mean, what is the communication in that that is for the proof of the truth of its contents? What no is the idea. contents of honking horn that you're trying to... The honking horn of a vehicle. Multiple times he objected to his hearsay. <laughs> that it. sounds like the tack kind of... <laughs> he, Instead of saying tacit agreement, Runkle, he says a tacit agreement. Oh... This has got to be somebody who's uh, done some reading but never actually heard any of the discussion. I'm guessing yeah, he's I'm... getting his uh, legal education from some online whack job who sure. doesn't really... Yeah. Sure. Um, it's Friday night. We've got popcorn. We've got wine. This is the Olivia Pope special. This is not in my diet. Let's keep it going. <laughs> uh, and Zach Ackerman in the chat is asking, is that Paul John? It is, in fact, Paul John. So that's Paul John is the whiskey and Nirvana is the, uh, I guess, the sub brand. Okay. And for those of you interested, I'll have to get you the brand later, but this is a Shiraz. And I committed myself to one drink a week. This is my one drink for the week. <laughs> I was hoping to have it tomorrow, but I guess I'm having it today because I really just cannot take this anymore. Oh, tea is so bad. If I was the judge, it'd be like, I'm just making a direction that I'm allowed a hip flask of <laughs> for this trial. I muted myself because I'm about to start again, but you just made me crack up. Yeah, she like <laughs> needs something. Like maybe like a little, a little thing of alcohol in her pocket so she can just swig it back every once in a while. <laughs> Oh, she's a saint. She's actually, such a nice, nice woman, this judge. I actually just bought an eight pack of hip flasks. Really? <laughs> I got my husband one for some event a couple years ago, and he, he loved it. <laughs> uh, when I was in Norway, all of the bars cost an insane amount to drink there. So I got a hip flask and I made I got so much use out of it. I'm surprised that alcohol is so expensive in Norway. Uh, they tax the heck out of it. So um, it was actually cheaper to get on a plane, leave Norway, buy alcohol outside of Norway, and then fly mm -hmm. back than to buy alcohol in Norway. That's really surprising. It's just because, uh, like, it's at the same re region. I was in Amsterdam. The booze is pretty cheap there. Iceland. Very cheap there, but I feel like because it's like dark all the time, they don't really have much else to do but to drink. <laughs> it's like, oh, all we've got mm -hmm. is alcohol and sadness. Yeah. So they've got really, really strong beer in Iceland. Great time, highly recommend it. I had a lot of fun there. Okay, let's go. Good morning, Ms. Patterson. If you would please make your way to the witness stand, which is on my right. You may recall it's up a riser. When you get there, please remain standing. Raise your right hand, and my question will be tell who is across from you, and on my left, we'll swear you in. Do you solemnly swear that the testimony you're about to give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes. Thank you. Please be seated. First thing I will ask you to do is to state your first and last names for the record. Erica Patterson. Thank you. Go ahead, your witness. Spelling the name. I believe it's on the record from previously, but go ahead. You can spell your first and last names, please. E R I K A P A T T E R S O N. Did he really now. just make an objection to are we spelling, are we not spelling the names out today? Yes. 
Of all the petty, stupid BS. That's the name of his defense, the petty, stupid BS. <laughs> that is true. I love how patient she is because like he's like I, I'm having trouble finding my paperwork and she's like oh no worries whenever you're ready um, judges are she not never holds, players. no and she never holds his foolishness against him he'll rant and rant and as soon as he starts behaving himself well I think you're doing very well sir oh well the compliments are just deadly on appeal because she's she's taking all those compliments but what she's doing is putting everything on record. I'm not seeing the fine paperwork. I just had on table. Some reason, high reason. Like I love when she's complimenting him on his hearing. It's like, sir, you could hear things very well today. I was very impressed. Just like, oh. She knows exactly what she's doing. She's making that record of there's nothing wrong with your hearing. Your hearing is better than mine, Mr. Brooks. It's better than mine. <laughs> This judge is the smartest person in that room. And That's right. that is the worst thing for Mr. Brooks. Um, and I know the audience, both here and on Twitter, you guys are frustrated. You're frustrated he's getting away with so much. Guys, Mr. Brooks wins some battles in delaying the trial. The judge is winning the war. The trial will conclude. It will go to a jury. There will be a verdict, and whatever that verdict may be, it will not be disturbed upon appeal. That is the war. She is providing the victims with the ultimate closure in their case by following all of the procedures and protecting is, all of his rights. Yep, she is making absolutely sure that he uh, that he goes to jail and that he doesn't get an appeal. She's yeah. doing a real, she's, she's really nailing it is what she's doing. And I get that a lot of sort of the Twitter sphere are looking at this going, oh, why is she giving him all these breaks? And it's like, she's not doing him any favors. She's no. just, no. every time he opens his mouth, she's setting yeah. a landmine for him for his grand, you know, grand scheme. She's just destroying him. Yeah. Well, and letting also. Letting him destroy himself. And also, when you're in trial and you see the judge yelling and screaming at the defendant, going in on them, this is rare. This is something you rarely ever see, but it happens. You know, shut up, no. sir, sit down, sir. Whoa, whoa, you know, like anything like that. And it's noted for the record. I'm real worried about that case on appeal. I have had cases where the judge, I had a case where the judge just lost it on me because he didn't like my argument. It was a good yeah. argument. Court of Appeal said so. Mm. Um, but um, he's sitting there yelling at me and I'm just like, this is all good because, mm -hmm. you know, when I'm going to explain why you didn't listen to my perfectly reasonable argument and I'm just sitting there going, you know, um, judge, I just want to note that your uh, your voice is raised. And he's like, you're damn right it's raised. Oh, like, not smart, Just judge. Like, not oh, smart. yeah, no, he did not read the room. No. Because um, mm -mm. when I'm just saying, like, I'm just noting that your voice is raised, I'm obviously putting that on the record. Putting right? it on the record. Putting it and on the record. I had another judge who just ripped into me on something and then later realized that they'd overstepped mm -hmm. and ruled in my favor to avoid me <laughs> feeling it. I've, oh, see, that I've had happen. Well, the other thing you mentioned, I've, actually, I've also had happen. Um, one time on one of the COSA opinions, I read about one of my arguments, the, um, appellate judge, uh, said something along the lines of, you know, uh, despite 
multiple unwarranted interruptions from the court. Miss, at the time I was just Miss Whittingham, Miss Whittingham uh, uh, persisted or something like that, or she um, insisted on proceeding, something along those lines, and correctly so. <laughs> And um, I, I was like, that's a very pointed dig, you know, <laughs> but I've also yep. had where a judge said, you know, they lose it on me in court and then will call me back into chambers to apologize. And then ultimately the ruling is in my client's favor because it's on the record that you have completely lost it on me. And usually it's just because you hate my client and the reprehensible thing he's allegedly done, right? Like, you, yep. <laughs> how dare me argue for this person that you hate so much? And that's not this, that's why I have so much uh, compassion for this judge, but also believe in a lot of, and understand a lot of what she's doing. It's very, very protective of the record and of the case, ultimately when it does see an appeal. Yeah, and you know he's going to appeal. You know he's going to try. Like, he's not going to go gently on this one. He's going to fight everything tooth and nail um, to the end. And so good for her for not just looking at, like, today, but also the next day, you know, and what happens then. Good morning, Ms. Patterson. Good morning. So what do you do for them? I will see next to the desk. Um, I'm going to direct your attention to the <laughs> evening of November 21st, 2021. You just raced through the rapport building right there. He also had it on 1.75, but he was like, what do you do for a living? <laughs> and moving right along to why I hate you so much. Okay, let's go. Yeah, I mean, for the chat, normally, you know, you start out a, uh, I see somebody in the chat is asking if I'm doing leather work. Yes. Um, normally you start this out with, you know, you want to start out a cross-examination usually or a direct examination, usually kind of soft, like, hey, Here's some softball questions. What do you do for a living? You know, how old are you? Like this kind of thing. And, you know, just put the witness at ease. Because if you just launch in and your first question is like, you know, so, you know, you're the real killer, aren't you? It's like, well, now you've blown your <laughs> chance to, you know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. The thing I, yeah, I, I, I totally tell people, agree with that. You, you catch more flies with honey than with vinegar, right? And so... Even if, with a witness you call, with an adverse witness, whatever, if you start off gently, a lot of the yep. times you can get more out of person than if you start out attacking them right away or going in like for the kill 90, right away. 95% of my crosses start out real friendly because mm -hmm. you can always go hot later. Mm -hmm. You can't go friendly after you've been aggressive, right? Not it just all. doesn't work. And so... And people, if they feel that they're at ease, they will answer all sorts of things that they might not otherwise have answered so unguardedly. Mm -hmm. So um, I've had mom I had a moment where a police officer was openly mocking me uh, because he thought I was asking stupid questions. He was just like, yeah, to the point where the judge is like, um, sir, you know, sort of chiding the officer. Yeah. And it wasn't until a little bit later that the officer realized that I wasn't asking stupid questions. He just wasn't drawing the connections. Nope. And uh, he got hammered. Like, I could just see the look on his face when he realized, oh, I see how all of this is coming together. And I've already given all those answers I didn't want to give. Um, putting you the witness him. ease is important. You backed him into a corner. You backed yep. him. In, you walked him down the path. He got overly confident. You got him nice and comfortable. And then he, he had his back up against the wall. Perfect strategy. I love and it. I, I love when they underestimate us. And sometimes, I mean, I was super new, so it was super easy at that time. Cause you know, you're, they, they know you've been at the bar for all of like 15 minutes, but like, sometimes it's great to just ask questions where you don't have your narrative yet. And you're just asking the key bits of your narrative in nonsensical order. Mm hmm and they're just like, cops do this especially, where they just get cocky and they think that you're an idiot. So they'll answer very candidly and sort of insultingly. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
yeah, by the time he realized that I actually did have a place I was going with it, it was deadly. But he's just going in for the kill. That's not a, a useful thing there. So. Yep. Yep. Everybody, welcome Nate the Lawyer. Who is muted? Hey, guys. My, my hey. internet's choppy, so I'm, I'm hoping I'm coming through all right. Okay, I can hear you. I can hear Sounding you. Sounding great. Yeah. How's it going? It's all right. I'm just watching this crazy <laughs> defense. I don't even know what to call it, but it's just it's just wild. This guy's wild. He's I think wild is putting it lightly. And for me to remain professional, wild is what I'm going to go with as well. Absolutely wild. OK, before we continue on with the video so that Nate can see some of the wildness and we can all provide you guys with our commentary. Look at this. We got three thousand. 915 people. Debbie Davis. Wow. Is this our Debbie Davis from Judge Middleton's court? Yeah. If it is, hey girl, hey, I'll send you a link. Let me know if it's you. So um, yeah, so listen. There should be at least 3,926 likes. That's all I'm asking for. You don't have to do that. <laughs> Okay, you don't have to, to, to pay a dime like the video. That's it. That's all. Okay, let's go. Do you recall what you were doing that evening? I was hanging out with my friend Corey at Frame Park. I had spoken to you, Mr. Dale Brooks. You came out there at Frame Park and met me after Corey, Miss Corey separated from me with her friend. Me and you got into an argument. Whoa, 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 whoa. Pursuant to the question. I am answering your question. I was referring to the judge. <laughs> I, was thinking I, was I think that kind of got a little ahead of. Oh. Mr. Brooks, just, uh, I'll let you interrupt the answer and you can ask a follow up. I, I apologize. I was instructing the clerk to turn up the volume. So go ahead, ask your question. Same question? Sure. What were you doing the evening of November 21st, 2021, before linking up with the alleged defendant? Hanging with my roommate at the time at Frame Park. And what were you and your roommate doing? I'll object. We covered this ground during her testimony previously. Objection. And grounds for I object to that and grounds for the objection on behalf of the state. You he's objecting to the objection? Ms. Brooks, we did cover. Yep, he's objecting to the objection. He is objecting to their ability to object. We lost Nate the lawyer, and probably because he said he was having bad service. It happens to the best. Matt Hurry just was like, "Oh, screw this guy!" I'm yeah, out. he's like, "This guy's <laughs> annoying. I'm out of here." Yeah, I object to the objection. You know, the thing is that when technically speaking, I, I get what he's saying. They object. The judge asked for their grounds, and then the, the the judge would, in a normal, sane courtroom, ask you to respond, and you would state your reasons for why their objection should be overruled, and you should the witness should be allowed to answer the question. So that's where he's trying to go with it. He just doesn't have the language because he's not a lawyer, and he shouldn't be representing himself in a six-time murder trial. It all comes back to that. Yeah, this is like high stakes fuck around and find out. Yeah, this is not a sovereign citizen in traffic court. This is not a sovereign citizen dealing with gaming and fishing licenses. This is <laughs> this is a sovereign citizen in a six-time murder trial. Not a good idea to represent yourself, especially under an ideology that's based in fantasy. He's like, let's just go straight for... Previously, no. So if there's new topics, please go for those. I'll give you a little bit of leeway uh, to lay some foundation. But go ahead and ask your question. That's, that's the objection the... is from the state is overruled. <coughs> Do you remember the question? You asked me what we were doing at the at the park of Corby. Is that your question? Yes. We were drinking. I was drinking my car beverage. Do you recall um, 
around what time of the evening it was when you and your uh, roommate arrived at the park? I do not remember. We left where we were staying, but it was um, afternoon, a little bit around afternoon. <coughs> Do you recall uh, do you recall having uh, any phone interactions during that time when you and your roommate were at the park? Phone interactions, yes. Do you recall who they were with? You. What do you mean by you? Daryl Brooks. You, the person physically in front of us. So, Runkle, you may not know that a lot of Brooks's arguments have been, I'm not Daryl Brooks. I don't oh, consent I... to being called that name. That's his usual thing. Uh, and it's <sighs> this is super common with sovereign citizens where they've invented some name. Although I've seen clips where they ask him what name he wants to be called and he doesn't actually know. That's but right. Okay. Oh, we've got Nate back. All right, I sh I should be back. I'm I'm so sorry for the for the first time I was here. I was actually on with Eric because it was their one year anniversary, and I set up this stream because I was like, as soon as that stream cuts, I'm over here, Natalie. But being a boomer, I hit the thing too early, and now I know one with you and them at the same time. And I'm like, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> so even I, but then Nate my. But so then my, I'm like, oh my God, how am I gonna do? And then, but then my, this crashed. I was like, thank God it crashed. So I was on there and I said goodbye and I came back. So I just wanted to let everybody know that's what happened. Well, nice to see you. Nice to see you. <laughs> thank you for dividing your time and coming on over here. We highly appreciate it. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna quibble with you a little bit though for calling yourself a boomer. Literally impossible. You've gotta be Gen X. That's true. I'm not a boomer, yeah. yeah but <laughs> yeah, I had a boomer gotcha. moment, though. Yeah, you had a boomer moment, but yeah, you're definitely Gen X. <laughs> 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 All right, I'm going to pick back up with Mr. Brooks because there's so many hijinks to be had. Lord have mercy. But you know what? I do like he's progressive. We were missed. We were a mask man, right? He was, he's not getting COVID. Now he's maskless because his life is on the line. And you he see? wants the jury to see him. That's what he said. Mm -hmm. I want you to see me. So for who I am. For who I am. That's right. I actually Rare, thought the mask Rare. was a better option just because sometimes if identity is an issue, having a mask. In well, is, Runkle, uh, that's really why he was wearing the mask before, because identity was all the state's witnesses were saying, that's Daryl Brooks, that guy right there. And so he's wearing the mask while they're showing the video of the guy driving the car, you know, to kind of obscure things, in my opinion. And now that that part is over, I want you to see the real me. I, I mean, think it's all very nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that as strategy. I thought his haircut and being in a suit was also a good move. Yeah, yeah. Very good move. But also, again, a move. It's a move. It's all strategy in his mind. Oh, but like the worst thing is when your client shows up wearing like exactly the same clothing as in the robbery or something. Oh, and you're just like, no. Listen. Oh my gosh. Or like, no, I shouldn't say it. Okay. Nope. Not. Enough time has passed, but I still won't because it's too unique of a situation. If heaven forbid she ever sees yeah. this, she'll know I'm talking about her. <laughs> like, <no. laughs> yes. Yes to what you just said. Can relate 100%. <laughs> oh, clients, man. Clients, man. Is that usually the name you refer to the alleged defendant by? No. What does she normally call him? That's interesting. Would it be fair to say I'm... that uh, during got those some ideas. Uh, phone interactions, there was a talk of you guys meeting up, would that be fair to say? Yes. Uh, do you recall, to the best of your recollection, what time that would have been at? No, I don't remember. It was throughout the day. I'm 
I'm sorry, you are you making references to the, the phone conversations being throughout the day? Yes. And so at some point, would it be fair to say that you did meet up with the alleged defendant? Yes. Do you recall what time that was? I just told you no. <laughs> She hates his ass. She does, and she's getting sassy at him. Do you recall if you were still at the park during that time, or had you moved location? Look at that facial expression. And was your roommate still present with you at that time? No, she left. We went separate ways. I stayed at the park, and she went her other way with her friend. Do you recall who that friend was? Nick. assuming or let me back that up um would it be fair to say that at some point during the meetup with the alleged defendant things got a little chaotic that'd be fair to say yes i i, I will say this i love the way he looks he looks looks so guilty he, he's literally looking like he handcuffed right now like, like he's just oozing guilt. <laughs> like, yeah. take your yeah. hands from behind your back. You look like mm. a guilty man right now. <laughs> I didn't even think of that. Like, his body posture looking like he is in cuffs, even though he's not in cuffs. I Why didn't even... You... I'm looking at it right here. <laughs> you see it? Yeah. Wow. I didn't even think of that. He's been standing like that all trial. Like, I don't know what's nobody just told him, like, take you know, it looks like you're you're in handcuffs. Just keep and your hands for, in front of you. For junior lawyers, it's like when you're getting started, it is really worthwhile to bring somebody else to courtroom to watch you in a trial and just be able to tell you, hey, um, here are the mannerisms that I found annoying. Cause I did this with a with one young lawyer, and I was he's like, So what did you think of my performance? I was like, You did really good. Uh, really great arguments. Get your hands out of your pockets because you fumble with your yeah. change and it looks like you're yeah. playing with yourself. And he's like, what? Oh, I'm like, wow. Didn't he? Dude, oh. it looked real bad. And he was just like, oh, uh, like, well, yeah. You know, that, just, that you brought something that. back to my mind, Ian, is, you know, when one of my um, trials when I was working on the Eastern Shore of Maryland in Worcester County, um, and I was a young lawyer at the time, a new lawyer. And during the jury trial, I always turn and talk to my client. Like I always talk to my client. So you, so the the defendant in the U.S. is farthest away from the jury, or at least in Maryland, is farthest away from the jury. The prosecution is next to the jury, right? And so my client was sitting to the right of me. The jury is to the left of me. And I all, so I finished my closing and I turned to talk to my client. I'm talking to him while the state is doing the rebuttal and making notes and just saying like, look, we can't say anything about the rebuttal. There's nothing we can really do. It's their, it's their turn. That's the end of the case. Cause it's their burden. And we're having a conversation and the, the verdict comes back and afterwards, and it was a decent, it was a decent verdict given the facts of the case. It really was a decent outcome. I go back to talk to the judge because he was a very cordial, kind of Southern collegiate type of guy, talks to both parties. And he wanted to talk to me by myself. And he said, um, you know, you turned your back to the jury and <laughs> don't ever turn your back to the jury. And I was like, I wasn't even thinking of that. I'm talking to my client, but it looked like I rested my case and just turned my back to the jury. And I never did that again, never did it again. So yeah, your body language is so important. It really can impact the outcome of the case. Maybe I would have gotten an even better outcome for my client. Maybe if I hadn't turned my back on the jury, you know? So, yeah. And when you see juror interviews, they decide cases based on some stupid things. So 
Yes. Yeah. Yes, they do. That is very, very true. Yes. Although, he just looked guilty. He looked yeah. guilty. <laughs> he always had his hands behind his back and his lawyer turned her back to us. So <laughs> guilty. <laughs> guilty. <laughs> Send him to jail. And do you recall <clears throat> if at that point you were still at the park? When we met up? Yes. Well, we were at the park for a second, then we drove around. Where did you drive to? Around, then me and, him, me and you, Mr. Brooks, were arguing in the car. We went up this it's a street, it's like a hill, not there. And then me and you got into an altercation, I got out of the car, walked back, Towards Frame Park. Oh, down. wait, again. Hold on, she's answering okay. the questions. Um, yes, yes. Where you drove from? Go ahead. And then, yes, ma'am. And then I was walking down the street and I left your car. And I said, You follow me. And I walked back towards Frame Park. And you followed me. Made reference to walk back <coughs> to Frame Park. Uh, I don't know the exact street name. <coughs> It was the walk back down the hill. I don't know exact street name. Did you at any time? <clears throat> sorry. Did you at any time during your uh, travels back to Frank Park? Did you at any time notice that uh, there was something going on in the the area? No. When I got to frame, I was too worried about walking back to frame park. When I got to frame park after I left it, that's when I realized there's something going on. All rules are being violated here. There's no no nothing here. There's no moment, no no rhyme, no reason. We're just asking questions about things we already know. We're looking at the table hard, but we're really let's just thinking talk about, about that. Questions. You know, Nate is making, and, and it it really does inform why the judge is. Thanks, Miss Mandy. I appreciate you. I saw your private chat. It really informs why the judges being so lenient to him and so his rants against her are so ridiculous the pro the prosecutor has cross-examined her he's questioned her on direct he's not asking her anything that's different than what we already know it's repetitive it's cumulative and there's really no reason to recall this person in the defense's case he's not establishing any of the defense elements like I don't know, I was acting under duress, or it wasn't me, or it was an accident. None of that is bearing on the issues of the actual charges. So go ahead, Nate. I just, I wanted to kind of lay that framework, sorry. No, you, you, you took the words right out of my mouth. Ah, that was the point <laughs> I was trying to make. But, I'm sorry, but you're right, though. I'm you're sorry. Right. <laughs> oh, I gotta learn how to be better at that. I'm sorry, the, genuinely, I just have a big old mouth, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, we with great, good, great minds think alike. And mm -hmm. I was like, oh, you, you saw it too. So it's actually, it's a funny, it's funny, it's funny to see because you're right. I think the judge is bidding over backwards just to say, just do your thing, you know? Right, right, yeah. right, absolutely. But, I mean, when you've got a vulnerable witness like this, it's, I've got less issue with it when, you know, he's doing this with a cop, but, you know, this is not a cop. This is somebody who's maybe a little more, um, who's going to be affected by this a little more. So mm -hmm. I, I think this might be the place for Leslie way. I, I, I think you're right. But in the direct of this, of, of Miss Patterson, of Erica, um, I'm sorry, in the cross-examination when she was called in the prosecution case, the judge stopped him. She stopped his cross-examination because she said that it was like becoming, you know, in, in layman's terms, abusive. 
that he was yeah. asking irrelevant questions. They were repetitive and they were really for just to uh, harass and annoy the witness. So she stopped him and he didn't get to finish his, his cross of her. So now he's trying to get payback and call her again, in my opinion, because there's not nothing he's saying is relevant to the actual defense. And he seems like he's just kind of wandering around hoping that a defense is just going to fall in his lap out of the sky. And did you ever arrive back at Frame Park? Yes. And what did you do when you arrived back at Frame Park? I called my friend Corey and told her that me and Mr. Brooks were in an altercation. Mr. Brooks was following me. Um, I went back to the SUV, the car. And you argued with me somewhere. I walked back across the street, and by that time, Miss Corey had walked towards us to meet up, meet up with me. No, can you pause it? Can hey, you pause it? You, uh, <laughs> what What of the main rules on crossing? <laughs> Don't let the, the witness recite the story again if we already heard it before. And we already heard the witness's story before. He just literally let her recite the whole thing again. This is a horror show. Yeah. I mean, yeah. this is what he does with all of the witnesses is allow them to run away, reiterating either you abused me or you ran me over with that truck. <laughs> oh, yeah, you, you do not want the witness to say that again. Oh, my God. Yeah. And he seriously, seriously, seriously does it over and over and over again. It's really disturbing. Your friends. Mm -hmm. uh, do, do you recall? Well, let me back up a little bit. <laughs> did you call your friend Corey or the friend that she had left you to hang out with? Corey's phone. I kept calling her phone. Her phone kept going to voicemail. And I called Nick's phone. He put Corey on the phone. I said, Daryl Brooks had just hit me. Keep getting that bad information out and also the hearsay. I I cannot stress enough solic uh, eliciting testimony where a woman says, yes, and then you hit me. And then yeah. you hit me. And then I called this other person and I told them that you hit me. Because, <laughs> yes. You know, that was... And, then, like, and, and let's not forget yesterday where Mr. Brooks called the person to the stand that she called who got up on the stand oh. and said, and said, I was gonna beat your ass because I saw you put your hands on women. And when I see a man put his hands on women, I get involved and I threw my jacket down and it was gonna be bad for you that day. So just- Was that on, oh my God. That was in the defense case, Nate. That was, that was, <laughs> that was his case in chief? Ah. That was his, he called that wit unforced error. Yes, he called that witness, yes. That's this is also why you guys say yeah. that gentleman's this... name again. Say his name. So tell me his name in the comment section. I can't think of it right now. It's, it's, it's Kirby, Mr. Kirby, Mr. Kirby. You know what Mr. Kirby looked like? Oh, oh, just a working class man. You know, he said he does odd jobs. You know, think about a guy that does like construction on the side or something like that. And maybe some Uber delivery, just a salt of the earth working, working guy, you know, that type of guy. And he said, he and another mutual friend of theirs get a call that Miss Patterson is in distress. And he responds and they go up there and Miss Patterson is in distress with Mr. Uh, with Mr. Brooks. And it's on video, guys. It's on, oh, video. This is on video. too. It's on surveillance yeah. footage. Him pulling up in the red SUV that later on runs through the crowd and kills all those people. He gets out the vehicle, gets into a physical altercation with two women, and then Mr. Kirby goes and jumps in the middle and says, get out of here. I've already called the police. And then Mr. Brooks allegedly takes off into the parade. So so, so we see him in the vehicle. We see the altercation before. We that's see all right. that. And, this, and he is the one that's introduced, that, I'm this, assuming, reintroducing this evidence because it's already been put on the first the time, video, right? The video had been in evidence, but the state, for some reason, they had called the other woman who was there, right, who was also a runkle, who was also a runkle, which is very interesting. <laughs> the other woman who was there, they called her, but for some reason, they had not called Mr. Kirby. So he calls Mr. Kirby, 
who is passionate because in a later, uh, after he finishes testifying, finishes testifying, he says to the news, I feel at fault because I told him to get out of there and I intimidated him to leave these women alone. He ran into that crowd. He feels like he's at fault and he feels like he should have physically stopped oh. him. And it was, it was heartbreaking. And that level of passion and anger and protectiveness of women was elicited by Mr. Brooks, not the state. You've got to like, you got to interview your witnesses before you call them. And I mean, he can't do that really from in yeah, custody. He's in jail. Yeah. But you know, I've had witnesses that I thought were going to be great for my client and I bring them in and talk to them. And I'm just like, you are not getting near the stand. If, if I have any, you know, say in it. I know that's um, right. I say, it, you know, sometimes you win your cases on the witnesses you don't call. <laughs> I'm sure Nate has had prosecutions where the defense calls a witness and you're like, hmm, this is actually pretty good for me. Thanks. <laughs> One of my it's up to, sometimes it works out. But you know, but you know, it's it's I, I, I think this is the, the point here is it's very dangerous to play lawyer. And I think a lot of people don't understand that. Yep. This man is on trial for the rest of his life. Yes. And instead of getting somebody to give him a shot, he's playing lawyer. And playing lawyer, if this was a death penalty state, we're talking about this guy being put to death. But essentially, he, you know, he's going to be locked away for the rest of his life. So, you yes. know, a cautious tale to the man who looks, you know, who, who's got a case and says, I don't need a lawyer. You know, good luck. That's right. That's right. This is the, the highest stakes. Fuck around and find out. That, yeah. Uh, the, and, and the man who represents himself has a fool for a client. It's just, it just is. It's all of those axioms from old to new. Fuck around and find out, fool for a client, everything. He's he, It's really the height of, of folly for him to be representing himself in this situation. Before we well, get back and to Mr. Brooks, hold on, let me do some housekeeping. Sorry, let me do the YouTube thing that you got to do, unfortunately. The, the other thing is that it's really hard to ask certain questions when you're mm -hmm. self-representing without it coming off as an admission because when yeah. he says oh when i did the thing it's like the jury's gonna hear you say i did the thing and, and so that's happened does a that weird now. speaking in the third person thing ian he does that weird like when mr brooks did this right when he's referring to himself to try to make that separation it doesn't work mike with law talk with mike said that yesterday here on the stream that you need an advocate. You need somebody to stand as a buffer between yourself and the jury because otherwise it comes off as extremely um, insincere and offensive. If the person's alleged to have committed the offense starts asking these probing questions that are probably good questions, just not out of the mouth out of the defendant. Uh, real quick, uh, 4,886 4, people are currently viewing this live stream. So nice. I want to see 4,000. 886 likes baby that's it that's all i want to see you're uh, you're running some numbers on this one yeah i'm uh <laughs> actually kind of like blown away and extremely grateful i don't think i've ever had this many people in a live stream before i'm pretty sure i haven't because you know usually my live streams like on the back end i get people on the rewatch i don't usually get this many during so thank you all very much who are here i highly appreciate you and thank you runkle thank you nate and thank you, Miss Mandy, who's helping me to keep track of the super chats. She is amazing. Um, thank you, thank you, everyone. I can say I I get zero percent of the credit on this one. That's all you. So. You get a little credit. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to back up a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> he looks like he's in handcuffs. I'm so sorry. I just keep thinking about it. <laughs> this is why a panel is so important. I didn't even oh, notice that. that day? Well, where I was staying at the shelter at first, I was arguing still with Mr. Brooks all throughout the day. Um, me and Corey had left. And Corey and I stepped away, and I went back to Fame Park. On the Fame Park, that's where I met you at. Me and you also... Got into argument that day, but we didn't drive around. We're at the frame park.
I got to say, the witnesses here is really on point. That's like so every strand in the right spot. It's nice. And the alleged defendant. She she came here to do business. We're together yeah. the day of November. That's that power cut right there. Yeah. She ready. She has to do that. That's yeah. looking good. Do you recall around what time it was? I do not remember. And you stated you were briefly with your friend Corey that day? Yeah, but she went a whole different direction. She didn't come to Frame Park with me. She turned on a whole different street right before Frame Park. This is such a weak cross. He's giving her so much, like, just dead time. And all, every time he's going, let me back up. Like that just looks terrible. You don't want to back up. You always want to be moving Do you forward. At any time points. on November twenty first. She just started asking him questions. I bet you he'll start answering them too. <laughs> Being interviewed by a detective. What were you doing that day? Well, I was committing and six murders. Do you recall? Giving the recorded. I think she almost feels sorry for him right now. She's uh, like, I hate you, but that's on. This is sad. Do you recall if you these some very leading questions for a direct examination? Too. Detective Goof all... Yeah, but prosecution's not gonna interrupt him. That's true. Yeah, you're gonna let him speak. Yeah, like, oh, and you're asking questions i wish i could ask again great keep going but it's it's the height of irony because on on the state's cross of his witnesses he lost it because all, all their cross was leading as it should be and he's objecting to leading and had a total meltdown yesterday or the day before because the state was allowed to lead during cross examination the judge said they're allowed to lead this is cross and he just could not accept that basic fact, basic tenet of criminal law, basic yeah. tenet of the rules of evidence. He couldn't accept it and had a meltdown and had to be removed from the courtroom. <laughs> oh. The details of the alleged incident on November 20th of 2021. I didn't give him all the details, but I did the next day when I seen him. There's also a time and a place for alleged, like, you know, when you're saying, hey, the assault didn't happen, but it's not like you're arguing that the state is making up the dead people. So just the incident is fine if you're arguing that it was someone else. Funny. <coughs> Were you aware that it was reported there was, in fact, no incident on November 20th, 2021? That's not true. Objection is to strike the answer and the question. Grounds. Lack of personal knowledge, hearsay. Um, sustained. I'll strike the question and the answer the reason stated sir rephrase or so can i okay so this male state that ha i i you know i always you know i'm a defense attorney so i'm a little biased against prosecutors i always say that okay y'all <laughs> i'm a little more critical of them than i am of other attorneys in the arena i always say that but these prosecutors are i think doing a very a very good job and but I I am seeing now that Miss Patterson or Miss Peterson is his witness, and so now when he's gonna you know when when he's making the objections is for Miss Patterson just like he was the one to call her, and I enjoy him 
very, very much. He is a he's the younger of the prosecutors. He's not the lead prosecutor, but he has some very consequential witnesses and he is highly prepared and passionate and articulate. I very much enjoy this prosecutor. So I'm just priming you guys for that. He's very, very good in my opinion. And I got to step out, but thank you for having me on. Uh, really appreciate it. And I really, I'm going to be watching this on replay. I've really been enjoying your coverage of this one. So thank you, Ian. Thank you so much. And listen, um, you know, <laughs> I guess I just don't have the competitive streak built up in me, but at eight o'clock, Rob with Lawn Lumber is also going to be streaming his, um, you know, his Friday night frenzy, and he's going to be covering this case as well. This stream is going to redirect there. And if at eight, you guys want to, you know, head on out there and go check that out, please do. After this uh, direct of Miss um, Erica, I'm going to move on to some more of the highlights of the trial so we can kind of, you know, move this along. But thank you so much, Runkle, for coming down. I really, really appreciate it. Um, guys, go subscribe to Runkle of the Bailey. Anything else you want to say before you go? Um, I'll probably be on the Friday Night Frenzy at some point, uh, and you can see what Rob's reaction will be to uh, my current project. So. <laughs> okay. Okay. Nice. So I and I'm gonna try and I'm I'm gonna try to pop hop over there as well when I'm done here. So I'll probably see you there as well. Take care, Uncle. Nobody you, warned Rob. And hey, Nate, we we got to do more stuff, Nate. It's uh, it's always nice to be on a panel with you, and it's always sort of uh, too short. So yeah. talk to you guys later. Uh, definitely. Take care, Uncle. See you later. Thanks. Of the witness that same paperwork that I attempted to show. No. And why not? It's another court statement, officer. The truth of the matter asserted. How's it not relevant when that was just testified to? Wouldn't that be opening the door? No. Next question. Don't you wish that that was opening the door? <laughs> yeah. Any reason why <laughs> he can't open the own his own door? He elicited he here saying no incident happened on November twentieth of twenty twenty one. No objection. Grounds. Since facts not in evidence, sustained. Facts not in evidence. Ooh. Grounds for the sustain. The record speaks for itself. So. Upon speaking to Detective Goof during the first interview, do you recall why you were not forthright with information? It wasn't that I was not forthright, I just didn't tell him everything right away. Why not? I don't know, Mr. Brooks. Get him, girl. I don't know, Mr. Brooks. Officer. Would it be fair to say that you should be truthful and honest? I was very truthful. I just didn't tell him everything at once. I told him the next day, Mr. Brooks. And in the alleged incident on November 20th of 2021, were you injured? No. <laughs> well, you did hit me a little, both like a little. Were you injured? No, I didn't have any marks on me. Were you injured? No, but you did hit me a little. Yeah. Were you injured? That's so disturbing for you to, for you to minimize your alleged abuse of her. And that's and you're being pedantic and you're drawing little, you know, lines. Oh, were you injured though? Yeah. That's really, really disturbing. Do you do you see what I'm saying? It's like it's not like he's saying, I didn't put my hands on you. He's saying, Were you injured? Yeah, were you injured? Yeah, yeah. Uh, essentially admitting to it. But I don't think he even realizes how this is coming off. I think he's just he, so no. he's he's so he's so enthralled in the moment and trying to at least get through it and trying mm -hmm. to get some some point. That he doesn't know it's it's not just the questions it's not just the what's on the page it's the performance it's the way it comes off you know yeah just and 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 the way you're in the way it happens so yeah it this is totally disgusted 
And you know, yeah, it is what it is. It also makes me think, you know, I, I think I've said this to you already, Nate, during the stream, they've been together at least off and on. And he impregnated her at least since she was 16 years old. And that's when he was convicted of having relations with her while she was underage. Right. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, and and the prosecutor is going to bring that up at some point out of the presence of the jury. She's now in her 30s. He's in his 40s because he was in his uh, mid-20s at the time. This woman has spelt, spent her entire uh, life, pubescent life, being gaslit by this person. This is the life she's lived with him, right? Of, yeah, you were hit, but were you injured? You know? Yeah, I came to the park to get money back from you because I had to spend money to get bailed out from allegedly hitting you. But did you have a beer? Putting everything back on her and making it her fault. I just wonder, I suppose, or wonder if that has been her entire life. Yeah, but that that's why abusers, I think, choose younger people. Yeah, if you're yeah. talking about what 14, 15, 16, yes. you know, when 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 you can those tactics are easy yeah. for us to see in our and you know in our 30s and 40s. But when you're 16, you know, this is somebody who's an adult, somebody who's 20, you said when they met or whatever. So that that yeah. that, that those dynamics change. And yeah. I think if you're talking about this person, look how bold he is to authority. Look how look how he's like talking yeah. to the judge. You know, he he's, yeah. he's even 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 um watching him sometimes, his reactions and things of nature. He gives off an era of, you know, I don't want, I'm not, I don't want to say fear, but it's just like, you know, he, he wants to intimidate. So I, well, I, I, I think actually fear is right because at some point during this, and we'll get there, mm -hmm. um, and I'll speed to that part after this is done. The judge said she's, he's placing her, the judge, in fear that she feels intimidated by him. Yeah. Yeah. And, and but, but think about goal. this. We're all seeing this in this courtroom. This woman was, you know, she lived with this and she grew up with this from whatever young age, you know, 14, 15. And I think mm -hmm. it's just one of those things where the horrors become normalized. Yes. And now I think she's waking up to the fact like, oh, my God, you know, it took something like this to wake up to the fact. Yes. This wasn't, you know, the way we were doing it wasn't the right way. No. And so as a woman, Nate, you can plug your ears. Let me jump up on my soapbox real, real quick. It, real fast, real fast before we get back to the video. And probably, I mean, I'm 38, so there's probably no young people watching this, but probably you guys have young people in your lives, either mentees or daughters or nieces or cousins or whatever. Girl, if he's grown and you're a teen and he likes you, if he's 21 and you're a teen, if he's 22, 23, 24, 25, if he's 30 and you're a teen, there's something wrong with him. There should be, he wants something from you that an adult woman would never give him. He can't control that adult woman. He can't get that from that adult woman. And so it's not flattery. It doesn't mean that you're extra special. It means that you're extra vulnerable any man that pursues a child. And that's what a 16 year old is. You know, in this society, we like to, you know, grow girls up before it's their time. A 16 year old is still a child. Your brain is not developed. A 15 year old is still a child. Any grown man that wants a child, it's to manipulate them. It's to take over. He took over this girl's life. Her whole life has been with this man. All right, I'm, I'm gonna move on. Is that what you're asking? So where were you injured? By my lips. Objection. This is the evidence. Grounds. Um, I believe the witness understood the question. She answered it. It may stand. <coughs> Did your roommate observe any injuries from the alleged incident on, on November 20th, 2021? She knew about it, but there's, there's nothing visible on my face do you know if your roommate do you know if your roommate had spoken with law enforcement it sounds like calls for speculation from november 20th of 2021 it absolutely is first of 2021 i don't know 
<clears throat> Did she ever tell you yourself that she was interviewed by any law enforcement? I don't hearsay. Did she ever tell you? <laughs> They're letting it go because they want to get this over with. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Breaking every rule. Literally every rule. One second. Tell us what your roommate thought about this thing. <laughs> that was the question. Tell us what your roommate thought about this thing. And then what did she say to you? <laughs> Hearsay, so speculation, you everything. You know, November 20th, 2021. I don't remember. Morning time. Afternoon. Time. I didn't hear it. Afternoon. But this is a battle that's been building a long time. And now she, you can tell, too, like you look at her body language. Her whole body language is like, yeah, you in here with me now. Yes, you in here with me told, now. Yeah. She finally got her power back. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I know the prosecutors must have been like, ah, this, this is, you know, we were, we were a little worried, but she's, she's fighting that out. What were you doing prior to the alleged meeting up with the alleged defendant? Objection. Grounds. Asked and answered. Sustained. Sorry, he's trying to paint her as a drunk and he's trying to paint her as a loose woman because why would Mr. Kirby be coming to her aid unless he was getting something out of her? That's what he's insinuating. I just wanted to make sure you guys are picking up on that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Grounds for the sustain. That's an answer. When? <laughs> Next question, please. When was the answer? <laughs> So to the best of your recollection, you you can't recall why an alleged incident on November 20th of 2021 was reported to never happen. Objection. Grounds. Ten reasons as the previous objection. Since facts not in evidence, it's characterized as her prior testimony and irrelevant. I uh, that <laughs> respectfully and ask for a legal finding of fact and a legal reconsideration of that ruling, Your Honor. Denied. Noted for the record. Next question, please. I'm trying to figure out how something got pulled out of thin air. Hmm. Interesting. His commentary would have gotten you and I kicked out of court by now. Yeah, it's not. That's not happening. So it would be fair to say that you have uh, a child in common with the alleged defendant. Would that be fair to say? Yes. Yeah, is that the only child in common? Yes. Do you have any other children? Objection. Grounds. It has nothing to do relevant. with the case. Sorry. Hold on. There's been an objection. Not relevant. Yeah. Other kids are not relevant. Grounds for the sustain? The record speaks for itself. Next question. I, well, what was the record speaking for itself? I didn't, I didn't hear it. Not relevant. How is it not relevant? Next question, please. How is it not relevant? So the just ground ourselves back in law. We all know the judge is not being mean. But it really is not the judge's job to tell you 
how it's not relevant. She states her reason for the ruling, completely appropriate, but telling him how it's not relevant is coaching him. And as I said yesterday, that's not fair to the parties. And she told him when he waived his right to counsel that she couldn't give him legal advice. And that's what that would be, would be giving him legal advice. The child that you have in, in common with the alleged defendant. How old is that child? 15. Do you keep regular contact with that child? Off and on. Describe what you mean by off and on. How old is that? Grounds. Not relevant. Not relevant. Sustained. Grounds. It's not relevant, sir. Ooh, what are we doing here? Next question, if he If he knew the words bias, I wanted to show this witness has a bias. He may have gotten over the relevancy issue because he's saying right. we have a child in common, blah, blah, blah. We have a history. This is why you need a right. lawyer. That would have been my rebuttal to the to the whole not relevant. Your Honor, I'm going to oh, show bias. Yeah. Now it may not have yeah. worked, but it would have given us given her a shot. No, you're totally, totally right. A bias cross gets you into a lot of information that would not normally be relevant. The history of our relationship, the custody of our children. Exactly. You know, yeah. So you have a Bias, you know, we all know in a in a common way what bias means, but in the law, it's your motivation to lie because or not be truthful with the court uh, because of some preconceived either uh, uh, love or hate, I guess you would say, for the defendant. So if you have this pre-existing hatred for the defendant because you guys have ongoing custody disputes. Sure, the custody of the children could become relevant. So, Nate, thank you for pointing that out. Very, very true. Very, but he doesn't, because he's not an attorney, he doesn't know to express that. Yeah. And so yeah. the state wins. The state wins on that. Wow. And the child in common that you have with the alleged defendant, that child live with you? No. Grounds? No. Grounds? Sustained, not relevant. You don't have to answer that. Do any of your children live with you? Objection. Grounds? Sustained. Grounds for the sustain? Not relevant. <clears throat> hmm. Those hmms are very, very okay, heavy. Credibility, Your Honor. So how is it not relevant? Doesn't go to credibility. Sustained. Goes to bias. For relevancy. Yeah, it's irrelevant unless you say the words, <laughs> unless you explain how you're trying to expose her bias against the alleged defendant, as he calls himself. Well, here's the thing. I think it's possible, although the chat can correct me, that she may have children that are not by him. And if that's the case, whether or not she has custody of those children is not relevant to bias. Yes, correct. But the children she has with him, the custody status that could potentially be relevant to bias, right? Is he a good father? Think? Yeah. You know, did, you know did, would like uh, uh, any argument, right? You said you hate him, right? Yeah. You hate his guts, yeah. right? Yeah. You wish he'd go away. This is the best way for him to go away, right? Right. For life. So that you can get full custody. And you'll never That's have nice. to deal with him again. Yeah. Fascinating. Yeah. He's not paying child support now, right? Yeah. Yeah. And you know, the uh, I'll, I'll say this though. I'm thinking like a defense I, attorney. You're going to like me now. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. Now I'm thinking like a prosecutor because I'm like, no, none of that comes in. It's irrelevant. Because I don't like the guy. So I'm thinking like yeah. a prosecutor. But then we flipped, you know what I'm saying? Like, you're like, no, Natalie, 
That bias cross is there, and you're absolutely right. You're but he, he is on direct, here. though. That's the problem. He's on direct, too, so. That it's not cross. Yeah, yeah. you're right. You're right. It's his what he called. But he could have done this in his cross-examination, but he didn't. Because yeah. he said he wanted to get into, you know, how many Mike's Hard Lemonades did you drink? <laughs> no, but the, the, and it's it's interesting because the, this case, even though it's a loser, I'm not, nobody can win it. But you could present a case where you can push around some of these witnesses and make and make it tougher. Because our jobs, to be honest with you, is to make it as tough as possible for those yeah. prosecutors to get yeah. over that, to make them jump through every single hoop, make Absolutely. sure they, they dot every, you know, dot every I, cross every T. Right. And if we do our jobs correctly, if they mess up, that's where we win. If they don't yes. mess up, then that's where you get a conviction. That's what our job is. Our job is to peel right. back the layers. That's right. Raise that doubt. Yeah. Raise yeah. doubt. Doubt. The defense does not have to prove him innocent. The don't got to prove nothing. Doesn't have to prove anything. The defense raises doubt. We raise doubt. So, uh, and look, there's uh, later on, I'm, I'm going to spoiler alert you guys right now because I don't think I'm going to be able to get to it in the stream, you know, because really and truly, I want you guys to go to Juan Lumber. I want you to go to Rob, but I don't think I'm going to get to it in the stream. But at the, at a certain period in time, one of these defense witnesses is going to say, I saw you veer away from my children and hit the horn and alert me that you were coming through, right? That is a doubt. With competent counsel, you could call, with that testimony alone, you could call into question intentional homicide, murder, a life You lost sentence. control of the car. You yeah. lost control of the we, car. We, we're talking about negligence and and. Yes. and Having his insurance company pay for all this, right? Yes. My God, his yes. foot slips. Look what happens. Yes, and and here's and now I'm gonna credit. You know, I can't get my husband on my stream because <laughs> he's a brilliant attorney, but my husband's not a YouTube guy, right? But we we talk about this case. He he's into the case, and so I'm parroting my husband here. This one is not my original thoughts because me, I'm like he's guilty. That's it. It's over. <laughs> There's no defense. Yeah, right? he's, yeah, right? he's been. <laughs> <laughs> and, me too. I'm with you. I'm with yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's done, right? But my husband said, look, all he has to raise is that he was running from the police because Kirby said, I called the cops. The cops are on their way. Get out of here. He gets out of here. He doesn't know a parade is going on. He panics. He runs into the parade and then panics. There's a there's an officer running behind him, loses control of the car, starts going all over the place, starts honking his horn and saying, get out the way, get out the way. And he's mentally panicking, but it's not intentional. And he hits a bunch of people. And that is doubt as to the intentional side of things. Now, it's not a belief system that I ascribe to. It's not what I think is borne out by the evidence of the case, but there's a lot of broken faces at the end of cases where everyone thinks it's a slam dunk, Different right? People. You guys, yes, they, people got to know the way we operate. You get yes. a nice, friendly doctor, just like yes. Amber Heard did. He gets up here. This yes. guy's obviously insane, right? This guy's up, you know, this guy, you know, have mama get up there. Oh, yeah, yes. my boy's had problems before. Listen, people, we know how to work it, baby. That's right. Don't, don't, you don't, that's why this, we, yeah. you know, nobody, nobody, you would be watching this, but nobody would be laughing. We laughing. Because he don't know what we do it, right? right? Nobody was laughing at Amber, right? People, we, we, we was nail biting because no matter, even though she had, I don't think her lawyers did a great job. They did, they did enough to make you say, mm, mm. right, mm. Mm -hmm. and that's all they really need to do. That's that's, that's right. what be happening here. Like we, he, we would be putting on a show at the state's expense, but that's, that's one right. great thing. That's one great thing about America, right? Because even that's a dirt right. bag like this, if he, if he was smart enough, he would have us do this for him and give him at least a shot That's at something right. other than life in prison. Because That's I'm right. talking about this was an accident and we're going to play it out. There you go. This was an accident born by a mentally ill man, right? Committed sorry, by a the mentally chat, ill The chat's going to hate me. I'm sorry. I'm giving these long diet drives. You're like, I got to go. I got to go. I'm okay. so sorry. <laughs> okay. 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 Let's keep it going. Let me shut up. I object to that and would like to inform you that I intend to appeal that decision unless you want to give a legal reconsideration that, of that ruling. 
noted for the record, I direct your attention to 906.16 and the basis for the objection being sustained is it does not fall within the categories listed. Next question. Is that lawful law? Next question, please, sir. I'm getting there. This is it lawful law? Is it lawful law is like, is it waffles? You know, it just is a completely nonsense statement. Where did you meet the alleged defendant? Reno, Nevada. How long have you known the alleged defendant? 16 years. Now he's laying some foundation for something. All right. You made reference to meeting in Nevada. Do you recall where you met at? But we already knew this. This is cumulative from the direct. In relation to the alleged incident on, on November 21st of 2021, would it be fair to say that there's been no contact between you and the alleged defendant? Not since then, no. answer was kind of low. Did you say no? I said no, not since then. So that, that, would, mean, that would mean... You heard her. That would, mean, that would mean no contact at all via phone or anything like that? No. My question would be I don't know if you can see them from here, but do you recognize these pictures? Um, you need to show those to the state. The bail will take them. That's not proper procedure, sir. Ooh, ooh, I missed this part. The picture of his, of his kids. Of his kids. Interesting. Guys, you have to show the prosecution as a defense the the exhibits you intend to introduce. And unless it's like you should really t show them all your exhibits up front unless testimony opens the door to exhibits you didn't intend to introduce. Um, but again, this is improper. You have to show the other side, allow them to make an objection, lay a foundation, things like that. And he just held it up to, to the witness, the camera, the whole courtroom. That's not proper at all. Putting the babies in the trial, why would you do that, Nate? I, I don't even know. I'm, you know, it, are these pictures for other kids? Like, like this is just weird. Like, what, like why, why would he, and the way he presented them too, like it was some type of gotcha or something. Now, obviously, there's going to be an objection of relevance here. Right? Simple. They have no relevance whatsoever to this Yes, they do. And I, I'm getting to how they have relevance. They've it's also sustained. never been disclosed to the state. Yeah, so he's, so he's saying he's going to get sustained. later foundation. Not relevant. Yeah, so, so, so not, see, now if he was a lawyer, he would know, all right, they're not relevant unless I lay a foundation to explain why they're relevant. So that's what laying a foundation is. Now you're explaining why yeah. they're relevant until you get to the point where you need to show them. Yes. Um, so I'll just give you guys like a quick example. Um, you have kids, right? You have, say, I, 
random person, you have four children, right? Um, two of them are this age and that age, correct? And, um, you know, um, I'm, I'm then show the photographs to the state. And then I say, you know, I'm going to show you, and I have them marked. I'm going to show you what's been marked as defense exhibits one and two. Do you recognize these photographs? What are they photographs of? They're photographs of your children. Then usually you would move to move them in. The state would make an objection. Then you might ask to make an offer of proof to the judge outside the hearing of the jury, telling them why you believe that this is relevant and go from there. But just holding it up to the witness in front of the jury and saying, do you recognize this? Not proper, not a proper way to introduce exhibits at all. But at, to this point, Mr. Brooks hasn't introduced his own exhibits. He's reused the prosecution's exhibits. Yeah, yeah. So, and there's a reason for these things. It's not to prejudice the jury. I'm really, really worried. I'm trying not to look at the chat while also looking at the chat. I'm really, really worried as to where this is going. Why are you flaunting pictures of her children? All right. The, the the only thing they're saying is what we're, we're like right at the cusp of something great. So they okay. keep watching. That's Here we go. Saying. It's something great. Before we get to something great, 5,115 of you are watching this video. That means you need to watch, like this video to keep it going. Okay, let's go. They, they are relevant. It creates foundation. And I can prove that. I'll take up the issue outside the presence of the jury uh, at the conclusion of this witness, and if need be, bring the witness back in. But no totally, problem. totally fine. And these need to be offered into evidence as well. Um, you stated that, that you don't know how to do that. No contact. How would the alleged defendant be? How would the alleged defendant obtain? Photographs from you if there's been no contact. Objection. Grounds. Grounds. Sustained. Some facts not in evidence, not relevant. How is it not relevant? Photos just don't pop up out of the blue. Mr. Brooks uh, assumes. Now he's testi testifying. Uh, testifying, yeah. And at facts. this point, I got conduct right here. after facts. the alleged date of violation here, it's not relevant. Alleged violation. You're for the correct. Record. After the date charged, that the dates that are charged for these allegations, yes. you are absolutely correct. Thank you. <clears throat> Have you? Since the evening of November 21st of 2021, have you attempted to contact the alleged defendant? Objection. Yeah. Grounds. Relevance. Grounds. Um, I'm going to excuse the jury. All right, the jury. Good decision, Judge. Yeah, because you're trying to just figure out where is he going with this? Like, you know. Where are these questions trying to elicit? There's no direction here, right? He's just asking random random questions about things. It just doesn't, there's, there's nothing. It's a little extra twitchy right now. Oh, you, you have it um, on 1.75. I was like, oh, what's going on? All right, sir, let's make an offer of proof as to why you believe the photographs and the questioning about contact after the alleged incident is relevant. It's relevant because these were sent by the witness. <laughs> it assumes a fact, not an evidence, but so what is the letter to hold on, hold on. Tell me the basis you believe there's been communication and why you believe it's relevant to it's, it's relevant because it was testified to her first time testifying, and then also uh, by uh, was the last guy, Goof, that he was told that the witness was supposed to be so 
deeply afraid of me and all this type of stuff. I'm sorry. So if you're so deeply afraid and worried about somebody and this and that, why would you sneak and have contact? Do you want to open up the door to the other act's evidence of That's not you? open. No, no, no. Okay. I know this is a seminal moment of the trial from today. I get that, guys. I totally get that. But right now, the argument he's making is that I want to attack her credibility. Yes, yes. I want Right. I want to say, don't believe her testimony about the day of the event because her testimony that she's had no contact with me since then because she hates me so much and she's so afraid of me is false she sent me these photographs. Yes. And so I, I want to confront her with the photographs that she sent me so I see where he is going. Okay. All right. Yeah, that's exactly where he's gone. But now, if the judge is going to have to determine whether it's enough to to go forward. I, I don't know. I, I think... He, I, I don't know. I don't think it's a loser. But you know, it's not it's, a loser. It's 50 50 for me because it's like, I yeah, yeah, just no, say, it's, okay, yeah. It's a, it's a decent argument. You know, you, the, you're, you volunteered that I'm such a terrible guy. You don't talk to me anymore. But here's photographs that you sent me. You do communicate with me still. But then and you're the talking about his, impeaching his own witness, though? Because he called her. I know. You so you can't, he, I, I, I don't think he can do it. Unless she goes hostile, and I don't think she's hostile. She's not. She's answering all of his questions. And you know, in my state, the the state of Maryland, there's no such thing. Thanks, Mandy. Hey, J hey, John, how's it going? Good. How are you? Good. Let me just make this point real quick. There's no such thing, no such thing as a hostile witness in my state. I know that that's different. You know, treating someone as a hostile witness, you ask them the questions, you see if they answer. If they don't answer. You know, you just do what you need to do to get them to answer. But if you call the witness, you assume the risk in the state of Maryland. You don't get permission to treat as a hostile witness, which when I moved from New York to Maryland, I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> but they won't answer my question, Your Honor. <laughs> and you just have to deal with it. But but anyway, I lost my train of thought. Somebody somebody saved me. Go ahead. Somebody save me. Pick up. Oh no, no, they they said they said this is the the hot part. We're waiting a hot hot part. So okay, let's go. Uh, and you can tell he, things are different because his hands are now in front of him so. instead of behind him, like a yes. like someone in custody. Yeah, <laughs> Nate, the body language expert. It's usually <laughs> Rob with Juan Lumber. Today it's Nate being the body language expert. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. That's not Hear opening me the out. door. Hear me out. Oh, yes, it does. No, it doesn't. These witnesses have been incredibly careful to abide by my ruling. Sometimes in a court of law, when there are pretrial rulings, the testimony of a witness needs to be said in such a way not to run afoul of that. This witness, Detective Guth, I believe Detective Casey and others, Corey Runkle, and even uh, Nicholas Kirby yesterday, this court has all had to stop them so that they didn't run afoul, or they've stopped themselves, so that they didn't run afoul of the court's pretrial ruling on other acts evidence between you and this witness. And I have been very, very careful to make sure that doesn't come in. But if you keep questioning her about whether she's afraid or not, or I why she wouldn't have contact or not, you are opening the door to that testimony. Uh. Don't get frustrated with us, guys. Don't get frustrated. But, oh, no, no, come back, Mike. <laughs> okay, <laughs> add the stream, add the stream. <laughs> oh, Mandy, I keep messing up. Thank you, Mandy. Hey, Mike. How's Hi, it Mandy. going? Hi, Nate. Hi, Nat. Oh, hey, hey, what's up, Mike? Okay. <laughs> okay, there, if for those of you that are coming into this ignorant, very few of you are. There are multiple previous intimate partner violence uh, incidents between Miss Erica and Mr. Brooks, okay? Multiple, multiple, where he is alleged to have abused her. In fact, he has convictions that have him on a registry as a result, okay? So... Oh, yeah. You don't know what's about to happen next. You haven't seen this yet. Okay, let me. No, we were saying Natalie Plant. Natalie doesn't want us. She's keeping us on edge. Spoilers. 
All of my rulings have been made to prevent what could be seen as prejudicial evidence. The standard's not prejudicial. The standard's whether it's unfairly prejudicial. But you can open the door to that, sir. It's unfairly prejudicial that I have a document stating that November 20th never even happened, but yet still the witness can get on the stand and lie on the stand. Have you turned that document over to the state? Come on, man. Y'all know that's not right. Y'all know that's not right. Then you need to immediately turn it over to the state right now. It may become relevant, but no one has seen it. When did you receive the document? Hold on. When did you? I'm having you make an offer. Wait, we can't get the document. I just want to stay for the record. It's about to get real. That's kind of. In the words of the great poet Jay-Z, it's about to go down. You could you could tell look at look at that look. He's got that look on. Like, I'm about to say some crap that's messed up that's gonna destroy my the world, but he's gonna say it. Let's hear him say it. Sure is. Oh, Mike, Mike and I watched this all day. State did the same we thing know it's coming. We're creating an uh, exhibit right on the fly that didn't even exist that I didn't have. But that's then, not true. That's a misstatement no, that, of the that, of that the is evidence. true. No, she said it herself. No, marking an exhibit is not creating an no, exhibit. No, not marking an exhibit. She said we're not going to go down a tangent, sir. Right, I'm going to focus gonna on this, you, and I'm going to give you the fair. opportunity to fair. make a record. It's not fair. right. It's not fair. When <clears> did you receive <throat> this document that you claim was sent by this witness? It is not claimed. It's for a fact, sir. It hasn't been established yet. I need to make a record. So do y'all want I the letter? I want to see the letter. With, with. I want to see the letter. Okay, yep. so I got it. And I want to know so when you received it. I got to bring that, that, in. Bring that the letter. in. Mm -hmm. Every time, this this one I'll get, every time I'm presenting something that needs to be made for the record and placed in the evidence, it's a problem. And when you don't place it in evidence, it's also a problem. Because you don't know what you're doing, because you're not a lawyer, because you shouldn't have fired your very experienced public defenders. That's why it's a problem. You don't know how to move things into evidence. Okay. He also doesn't have Woo. the letter. Just, just. He saying. also doesn't have it. It's back in his jail cell. <laughs> well, he said he says I had the letter right here. Then it's got, got procedures, and okay. I want well, you to that make was the a proper record. Procedure. If I don't, if you don't make a record, so then what? I can't it, make a ruling. It threw people off the loop. They weren't ready for it. They scared of it. That's what it is. Oh man. <sighs> Mr. Brooks, oh, man, stop when you you stop are it. you are stop even it. You're a public servant, Your Honor. I, I respect your courtroom. I you respect do. you. You're a public servant, though. Your job is to be the referee. Is it or is it not? You stated so yourself on record that your job is being the umpire. Right. I have Ms. Patterson. Or do you tell? Yes, you can tell. be excused. My apologies. My apologies too, but it needs to be some truth. <laughs> Especially when we're talking about stuff that didn't even happen, but they're allowed to get on the stand. It needs to be some truth. I'm sorry. Has the judge not just said, Mr. Brooks, Mr. Brooks, provide me with the letter where she's having contact with you. <laughs> John, it's the... We've all lost. <laughs> It's not funny. It's ridiculous. <laughs> Natalie, this is what happens after you join our stream. Oh my God. <laughs> Yo, look at his face. He got the ignorant face on too. Yeah. Oh. Because he thinks he's sparring. He thinks he's with an equal or a subordinate. Oh. Little does he know that he's in the court of law where the judge rules and she's just giving him some leeway. He will. He thinks he's winning battles, but he is going to lose this war. Okay, let's keep mm -hmm. it going. Say that it happened when they know it didn't happen. So let me make. I'm going to make a record about what this he's referring ridiculous, to man. in count seventy seven. Okay. The Where, state, and what happened to that paper? Because it was on the table. Then when Mr. I come Brooks, back in, I need to make a record happen. of a variety of so things. So took my paper? And, and you keep interrupting me repeatedly today. Mm -hmm. I have shown an abundance of patience this morning. I've warned you repeatedly about being removed from the courtroom. And then every time I try to get into it, you, uh, meaning an explanation and make a record, you interrupt, you attempt to divert everyone from what is being done this very second. I didn't attempt to do anything. Yes, you do it repeatedly, okay, sir. Whatever. So you're doing it once again. Whatever, just make your record. 
whatever. The it document that Mr. Brooks wanted to show Detective Guth and this witness was a letter sent from the state of Wisconsin to the court regarding count 77. The state sought to dismiss that count and they have prosecutorial discretion. And I granted the request that the charge be dismissed. Why was the charge dismissed? And that's, I, I can't answer, I, it was dismissed. I can't believe she indulges made, this, but she sir. does. They don't need a reason. There's a, an abundance of case law about prosecutorial discretion. And they chose not to pursue Absolutely. that. My Your guess Your is Honor, maybe to respect. simplify things and to keep this tidy. I don't know. You know what? I'll indulge you. Attorney Upper, would you like to provide no, a basis stop for indulging him. the state sought dismissal of that charge prior to the start of this trial? Yes, Your Honor. I'm watching this for a second time. He, I, he, oh, wait. I didn't catch this. He's taking issue with the state dismissing a charge? Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He, he mm. couldn't be no more. This is an offer of proof for a charge that's dismissed. Now, this is, this is, I'm, I'm going to say this. I'm going to say this. This Please. judge, I would say, if, if that was his prosecutor, I'd say, Your Honor, objection to your question, because this is highly irrelevant, right? It's, it's, of course, I'm not going to give, because what she's doing now is that you could have some other dumb defendant come and say, Well, they did it for her. Why not? Now you got to make the whole thing, right? You're supposed to say, Ma'am. No, we will not tell you why we drop. We have the absolute right to bring and drop charges, and we chose to drop this one. Period. It, it, there's no question, no question at all, that it is the prosecution's discretion, the state's discretion, whether or not to pursue a case, to pursue a charge, to pursue a theory. It is up to them, and they 100%. don't need to they don't need to give any reason for dropping a case. Never, never. And Absolutely. as defense counsel, I don't even want to know why you're dropping the case. You're dropping a charge for my client. Thanks. Have a nice yes. day. Let's and let's not speak of it. Let's not put it on the record in any way, shape, or form. Don't look a gift horse in the mouth. Thanks. <laughs> because as Ms. Patterson just testified a short while ago, she did not have any visible marks or injuries from that event. And we did have the photographs of her injuries. We did not want to confuse the record as to whether or not there was a battery that occurred on November 20th. Your Honor, I object to that. What does, what does the letter read? You have the letter. You showed it to I, me, I sir. Try, yeah, and I'm, I've been trying to find it ever since I came back in, and now all of a sudden I can't. And now you're it. imputing, though, like somehow you're imputing the integrity of this court, no, the bailiffs of this state. You're accusing, frankly, everyone did of I moving your finger, paper. Did I point the finger at anyone? Did I say anyone did anything? Not directly, but indirectly you did, So sir. how can you make you the assumption made, that I'm saying? Can I, I please make the something? record without yes, being interrupted? Yes, you may. Yes, you may. I apologize. I appreciate that. Thank you. But you made repeated comments, sir, about the, I can't find my documents, I don't know what happened, things of that nature. When you came back out, uh, you took multiple minutes before you even asked your first question of Ms. Patterson. Um, and if I need to, I will have a bailiff put on the record that no one touched your table. <laughs> <laughs> this is bending over backwards. My God, this poor judge. You implied it, sir. But did I say that? You I, mean, I never you stated said, it implicitly. I never asked the bailiffs, hey, did any one of you touch my table? I never said that to them. I just said, I can't find my paper. He is a master of misdirection. There's, there's, okay, someone says, please get to the end. Just do it. Okay. I'm sorry. It's just a master of miss. Now someone's, you know, someone's messed with your homework. The dog ate your homework. I'm just so over this. Which is the truth. I'm, and the I'm way that down. you said it, like, hmm. I didn't point anyone without, out, with, though. And like, well, that's kind of spirit. interesting. I don't, I don't have a document that was just on my table. That is what you said. 
That's what I said, effect. but I did not point the finger at anyone. So I can you see have if the I letter. came in, Your Honor, with You've all been respect, given. I can see if I came in and said, hey, why don't you move something off my table? Or if I would have directed that towards the state or if I directed that towards the clerks or something like that, then it would be I can get better. That would be more of a validity to what you're saying. I need to continue with the record, sir. It's very apparent to me, sir, that every time I can't say every time because that would be an absolute, but many times throughout this trial and especially the last two days when the court makes a ruling that you disagree with or I want to make a record about some behavior of yours or a, a further record about a ruling that you uh, that was not in your favor, that you start peppering me with questions or comments statements you question me about the law you ask is it verified law it is from my perspective a clear attempt to to kind of turn us in a direction away from what we're doing perhaps even to stall and to delay i'm sorry that's my that person that i'm making a rule you're doing it again i mean because it has no validity <laughs> so Proof i am trying more. to make a record outside the presence of the jury about a line of questioning you want to ask Ms. Patterson. Now I've reviewed repeatedly up on the bench 90608 and 90616, which are two of the primary ways you can attack credibility. Yeah, yeah Chuck Ging Ginger's in the house. 90608 is evidence God of damn it, conduct of a witness. I'm not gonna read Mike, I'm going to kick you out if you keep bullying John about being a fake ginger. <laughs> it's John, that's your that's your running joke now. I'm sorry. It's I, I know. It's <laughs> over for you. You're a ginger. <laughs> You're so innocent, too. You know how YouTube is? It's just like an innocent comment from one of my... It was a commenter who happens to be ginger says, I'm telling you as a ginger, and John thought it was him. He's like, I'm not a ginger, and just all hell broke loose. That's all right. Apparently, I'm a ginger now. To character for <laughs> truthfulness or untruthfulness. It's not specific instances of conduct. It's character evidence, which frankly wouldn't even come from the witness who's testifying. All right. Then there's the statute on bias, 906.16. All right. And none of the questions, as I heard them, went to a permissible topic under bias of witnesses. You generally said credibility. You did not give me any further explanation as to why you believed it was relevant to credibility. Now we have you uh, claiming that there's some document that was sent by the witness after the charges were filed uh, that apparently contained photographs, I think, and you can clarify the record momentarily when I'm done, um, that you believe goes to the credibility of this witness. So I need to ask a few questions about that, sir, to determine whether it has relevance to those issues. Number one, when did you receive this letter? I received this multiple letters, actually, over a period of time. It, it wasn't I refer to this one because this one, this one liar. But and why do you believe one, it was from to Ms. Answer your Patterson? Question, to answer your question with clarity. Thank you. Does it have a date on it? The letter? No, I didn't bring the letter. I brought the pictures because I thought, from my interpretation, I thought showing the pictures would be okay. How did it? How did I get these? So my mine was saying show the pictures they didn't they didn't come out of thin air the witness we knows the that they sent me the pictures they know that well again it assumes facts that aren't here you're assuming this witness sent, sent it i don't know but even if she did what relevance does it have to her credibility before this jury it goes to the credibility because she's put on this facade of being so <laughs> afraid of someone but yet still, you know that we're not supposed to have contact, but you still sneaking behind and saying, oh, 
I wonder how you're doing in jail. Oh, this and this and that. Oh, I don't think no, she's ever said she was oh, afraid. Ooh. I think that was the officers who may have uh, stated that. But I don't believe she but ever it, said that. She specifically said today when you asked her why did you, it was either why did you go back or why did you have a look at my notes. And she it was said, she wasn't afraid in the state's case. Right with all the details. Like, that was the question. So again, I'm going to ask you, even if this letter's from her, these pictures are from her, how does it relate to her credibility before the jury? Who else could the be, who else could these pictures be from? I'm going to ask you, your mammy, that's signed from her. I got, what do you mean signed? No how do you know, letters. what's your, why do you have a belief that they are from her? I have multiple letters from her. You're not answering my question. Why do you believe the letters are from Erica Patterson? Because they were sent from Erica Patterson. Why else would I? Were say? they signed by her? What do you mean signed? Did she write her name on the letter? I mean, were they was signed? The content of the letter? <laughs> no, I'm not kidding you. I need to make a record. So you're Isn't making a statement that these letters are from her and that they're relevant to her credibility. Your Honor, I'm going to go out on the on the limb and, here. and I'm asking you why you have hold that opinion. I'm, I'm going to go out on the limb here and assume, which I know is true. You've never been in my position. You've never been in jail. So you've never received a letter from someone writing someone in jail. Yeah. And you've never no been in court. You don't know how to lay a foundation. When you You're say not to answering me, my when question, you say to sir. Me, What's this? the basis why you believe they're from Miss Patterson? Is there some information in them that you that only she would know did she sign the letters is it a, is it penmanship that you recognize why do you believe they're from her yeah. as opposed to somebody else sending you information could be your mom could be i'm just saying she, she helps him so much and he still can't get it right so he could still lay the foundation but why this, he doesn't this, take it up this is mind boggling to me like how I got a child with this woman. How would I, why would I not know her handwriting? But you have to why have a foundation for these letters, sir. That might be oh, through your good. own I testimony. I can't that one. <laughs> so that I'm trying to figure out why you believe they're from her. Not all this other stuff about Are you I'm in serious? jail and I have a child. I'm trying to, ask, I, I need to know. It's called an offer of proof. Are you serious? What do you believe? Yeah, why do you believe she's serious. they're from mm -hmm. her? I am serious. Yeah. Because, because they're worried. from her. But you're assuming. Like how? How else am I supposed to answer that? Yeah. Legally. Oh, I'm sorry. That's not how a court of law works. <laughs> oh, it just is because I say right. it is. That's not how it works. I've given you a few reasons why it would lend to that. Opinion. So it has to be. It has to be put in a legal. The bottom line is, I need the letter. Yes, it so does. You're going to yes. question her on that. The state <laughs> absolutely has a right to see the letter. So you you need to provide that letter. I'm not. The bottom line is, I'm not going to allow any questioning without having that letter. So the state has the ability to question to you about worst. that. Or question Nor would any other judge on the planet. The veracity of what your claims are here. So. When we, I may take an early lunch. If that's in your cell, then you can go get it and bring it. But without that letter, I'm not allowing this line of questioning. Did he just say in the legal sense? And it was like, yes, in the legal sense, you idiot. You're in court. Sometimes I gotta say the same thing on, on, on record. As opposed you know, sometimes, to- sir, I don't hear what you say because you interrupt me so much or you answer quietly. And, and I'm taking notes and I'm focused on probably a dozen things at the same time. But if I, but if I say something, I'm Fair. Up, everybody seems to hear it. Everybody seems to hear In that just fine. In a quiet courtroom, everybody yes, assumes, we can hear it very clearly. And everybody assumes that it has to be disparaging. Or, Once again, you're doing this tactic. Because you try to it, it's not a tactic, it's facts. It's facts. It's facts. To some other reason. It's facts. Because I, I find thing. it hard to believe that um, I'm gonna all let of a sudden state... nobody hears what I say. I'm going to let the oh, state man, make stop. a record of why they stop. believe it's objectionable. It's not that I'm going to let them do that. Say. I've given nobody you multiple opportunities to tell me why you so believe I, it's. I didn't get these pictures from they, nobody else. Why was somebody else? The record else? will reflect you have two pictures that you believe were from this witness. That I know is from. No, that you believe. That I know. All right. I'll ask the state their position on all of this. 
My position, Your Honor, is that these pictures, first of all, should not be admissible. One, because of a discovery violation. We've never seen them before. Two, because we have reason to believe that he did not get them from Erica Patterson. He is on a jail phone call talking to his mother, Dawn Woods, uh, about Dawn Woods sending these photographs to him. Now, that's a lie. I object Let to that. Let the state make their argument without interruption. Ooh! Three. I believe that these photographs are designed to make a suggestion to the jury that Erica Patterson is a bad mom. I think that that's what the defendant is trying to do. And if we're going to go down that road, then we would be forced to counter that claim. First of all, it doesn't make her an incredible witness, if it's even true. And second of all, if we go down that road, we would be forced to counter that claim by pointing out that not only does the defendant not live with the child in question, he doesn't live with any of the other children that he has. He impregnated Erica Patterson when she was a minor in Nevada. And for doing so, he was convicted of statutory sexual seduction, pled guilty in March of 2007 to that felony offense, and is a sex the offender the on registry comes in. as a result. So if there's any causation that would lead to Erica Patterson being a bad mom, Mr. Brooks has a direct role in that causation. And that's Keep going. Yeah, play it out. Oh, my God. Play it out. He still got somewhere to go. Oh my god, I'm sorry. I, oh my god. Woo! Okay. Further down yeah, yeah, today. I'm I not think sure she was that's 14 at the Let time. Let him finish. Let if him we, finish. We're gonna open the door on that. No, since he want to make a record and not be accurate, so let's be accurate all on the record since you think you know so much. Once so again, we can Mr. open Brooks the door on. We can open the door on how old she told me she was. Interrupting. We, we can ask that question to me. Over the top. Do you know that? Mr. Brooks, I'm ordering you to sit down and to let the state no, finish. No, that's not. I'm not going to sit here and let somebody be inaccurate on the record and lie on the record. Right. Under Illinois versus Allen, I've warned him repeatedly. He's being removed from the courtroom. Um, and you know what? Let me dial that back. We're just going to take an early lunch. One hour. We'll be back. And uh, unless he brings that letter Don't and he can show it is inadmissible, she will not be questioned. <laughs> And under 90611, I will declare the cross examination closed. Know where, know where, Thank you. We're in recess. One hour. Right? Get your back. Wow. He took the mask off at the end there, guys. You know what, though? If I knew oh for a God. fact that I was going to jail for the rest of my life, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I always wondered why they take it so he's not going down without a fight, right? It's like what the what the yeah. hell they what the hell are they going to do? Put another fifty years on, on on my you know yeah. two hundred year life sentence? That's what I said when when they were like, why doesn't the judge control him more? What can she do? He has nothing to lose. He's already in jail. Holding him in contempt means nothing. Give him another five what? days. <laughs> yeah. He has no incentive to behave himself, but the mask comes off when he is challenged. And again, Natalie on her soapbox, everybody else can plug your ears. I won't be offended. But my God, when he goes about... She didn't tell me how old she was. That's the classic playbook from the, from the, starts with a P word. That's the classic playbook of she lied about her age. They can't all be lying about their age. Right now at 30 something, she looks like a kid to me. That's just me. I can only imagine at 15 and 16 what she looked like. You know what? You know, I'm, I'm not, I don't want to get in a soapbox, but I do want to say this, how scary it was for a 14 year old or 15 year old to be involved with this particular man yes! using these type of tactics yes! against to just imagine what this woman had to go through. Look at what the judge is going through. The, ju the judge in the trial for his life keeps saying, every time you get caught, you keep moving off. You, you, you always change context. You always change, make a different point, right? You're always throwing us off. That's the tactics that always worked. And this is classic abuse tactics. And we're seeing them play out. But the problem is, is that he doesn't have the power dynamic to pull it off. With her, he did. 
but in this courtroom, he doesn't have it. And on top of that, it must even be it must even be more hurtful that it's a woman that he has to battle with for this power, for this ability. Right. So it's, and, this, and this woman is a judge and she's an adult and she's not a 14, 15, 16 year old girl. I just saw Griggsy says allegedly he, when she was pregnant, she was 14 years old. Yeah, that's my understanding. And all, all her life, she's been blamed for being preyed on. And he's doing it right now. Right now. Yeah, he's doing the same exact thing right now. My God. Nate, you nailed it. That was spot I, on. I agree with both of you entirely. Just for the record. I just... I I hope that Miss Erica gets the counseling and help and wraparound services that she will inevitably need when this man is completely out of her life. I, I really hope for that for her. Um... I, I think Daniel has already started. I, I, I think her being on the stand, her yeah. being challenged, her doing that. I, I think that's that's all part of it, right? Because she's facing her, you know, she's face, she's facing the person that she's accusing of this stuff. So it, it's right. it's tough, you know what I mean? But I, like, I don't want to do like massive spoilers, but that's his entire defense strategy is to revictimize people. Yes. Yes, I. Yes, say it again. Say more. Yes. No, his, his whole point is to re-victimize people. And I, I was on with, um, here, let me put the cam on. I, I, I was on with Mike today and we were watching it live. And is there a cognizable defense theory, at least when it comes to the life sentences? Maybe, potentially. That's not what he's doing. He's calling every victim back in to re-victimize them. It's just, it's this, it's, it's sociopathic. Yes. I, I'm, I'm thinking he, he thinks he's under the false impression that reasonable doubt is any doubt. Mm. So that's what he's going after. He's going after any time. She, know, she, but... she, she said this, right? She said that as <laughs> her credibility, you know, she, how did I get these pictures? Cause she's lying, mm. but he doesn't no, but understand he, here, what reasonable doubt is. He never actually attacks the six top counts. He attacks the DV case over and over for the entire day. Yeah, I the, guess this, that's the one that hurts his psyche more when he doesn't realize that it's the six murders that is going to put him away forever. So well, see, I don't think he there. understands that. I don't think he understands that. I think you're right. I don't think he understands that he has to argue against those charges. I think he's thinking he's doing enough to win. Yeah. No. So, so I, I do think that he at some point tackles the the top counts when he asks other witnesses other witnesses not her not Kirby not Miss Corey Miss Miss Runkle right not them but when he asks the other witnesses you didn't get a license plate you didn't see the person inside the car you didn't you said the color of the car was black he's going to identity you saw the vehicle swerve in the other direction he's going to intent, right? Deliberation, premeditation. He's going to all of those things. But when it comes to his chosen victim, the person he's exerted all this power and control over for over 15 years, he loses it. He, for, he takes his eye off the prize and it's all about subjugating her and bringing her back to heel. And anyone that stood in the way of that, right? Um, it, the, the gentleman that was there, Miss Runkle that was there, anything that stood in the way of that, they are the enemy and that's how he treats them. And then when he gets back to the other witnesses, he's back on the, he's back on, on the goal. He remembers what the purpose of this is, but he completely breaks down and melts down whenever it comes to Miss Erica. He just, that is his property. How dare her get on the stand and speak up against him? How dare her? Um, okay, so I this is analysis, Natalie. this is the judge's reaction to Mr. Brooks staring her down. This is the last clip that I'm going to look at before we get on to the super chats and conclude this stream. I want to thank all five thousand of you who are here right now. 
I would appreciate it if you didn't hear me say this multiple times through the video. And I'm sorry if it's annoying, but it's necessary. If you could please like the video. That's all I really ask for. Thank you all kindly. Thank you for being here while we, you know, sit with this very, actually very difficult case to sit with. It's actually very disturbing when you really think about the consequences of everything. Years of abuse that culminates in the death of six people and the injury of many, many more. But these these people have heard some real good commentary today because we've been on fire today on this on this one. So yes, yes. And if anyone's interested, Mike and I did this live on Monday as well. So we've been covering it cover to cover. And John, plug your channel, even though it's right there, but you've gotten to 2,000 subscribers. I think Woo! you can get to 10,000. You just got on the YouTubes. Great lawyer, licensed in two jurisdictions, New York and Florida, right? Yes, ma'am. New York and Florida. Guys, go over and subscribe. Plug your channel. Uh, it's J. Robine Law. You can look it up. It's there. And John also uh, uh, mediated is not the right word. What is the word for? Remember I had a debate here on the channel with that guy? Uh, moderated. Moderated. There, thank you. I'm having a brain fart. I'm tired. You moderated a debate I had with a Twitter attorney when we discussed the Amber Heard verdict. You did a great job moderating that. So you guys should uh, not fun. be unfamiliar with John. So make sure you go and subscribe to him. Thanks, guys. Everyone can have a seat, and then we'll just wait for the door to close. Go ahead, Mr. Brooks. Uh, He's got more boxes there. No coat on, too. That was after he was thrown so out of the courtroom. Um, I think he left his coat in the other judge about her reports. How's the how's how are some of these answers allowed to to pass when they're coming straight from reports made by the people on the stand? Very curious. I don't understand your question. Are you? I'm not sure what you're asking me. I'm asking. What I'm asking is. Oh, the story gets reading crazy from the guys. report that the people on the stand are giving the report that they gave to read okay so quick quick context mr brooks after all the blowing up that we had just seen had called some witnesses who when they gave reports the police said one thing but then when they got on the stand said i don't remember right so what he wanted to do was impeach them with a prior inconsistent statement, but he didn't know how. And so he is he asked the court to go into recess so he could ask a question, which is how is it that they can say one thing to the police back when this happened, but now when they get up on the stand, they say, oh, I don't remember, or I didn't say that. How are they allowed to lie like that? This is why you need a licensed practicing attorney. Impeachment with a prior inconsistent statement or refreshing the recollection of a witness are technical and difficult things for that attorneys do throughout the trial. And for the judge to coach him on how to do that would be her giving him legal advice, which she's not allowed to do. So that's the context of where we are. 100%. Uh, to law enforcement. If you're asking me whether there's a mechanism in the rules of evidence and how to establish that before the jury, the answer to that is yes. If you're asking me how you do that, I'm not going to answer that. I mean, I mean, ask how. I just, I just, to be blunt, which I've been since the beginning of this trial, obviously. I see the whole strategy here by the prosecution. I, I see right through it. Don't have any cross examination. Mainly because you you've already schooled schooled the people getting on the stand on how to answer certain things. Well, that is completely speculative on your part without it's any obvious. basis in law or fact. It's obvious. Sir, you could ask questions that establish that. You can ask them if they've met with anyone. You haven't done that. So for you to say that right now is without basis. 
If you it's, want to, it's clear. If you are looking to elicit what they said in the report, there is a way under the rules of evidence based upon the way the witnesses have answered to clarify that. But that requires you to call certain witnesses. I'm not going to give you any more legal to, advice further to, than that. I don't think I have to. So call any other witnesses. That's if you're not asking me to strike their testimony based on I your perceived, I didn't say anything about that. All right, then I'm going to bring the jury back out. And you're going to call your next witness. So I'm so not hearing you, a request from you at this time. You said you wanted to raise a legal issue. What's the legal issue? The legal issue is what? How how is the state allowed to coach? The You're assuming the they spoke to them and coached them. It's obvious. I'm not. I'm not stupid. Well, I disagree with that, sir. Again, you could ask questions to sudden, lay a foundation. All of a sudden, say <laughs> all of a sudden. <laughs> she didn't mean to say that. No, but it's too perfect. <laughs> it was. It was like right on. I'm not stupid. Well, I disagree with that, sir. I disagree with that. She was disagreeing with the thing he said before that, with his assertions that the prosecution had coached his win. Okay, sorry. I woke my cat up with my excitement. Sorry about that. Um, but anyway, that was just so good. So, so. First time in trial, all of a sudden, now they don't got no cross. That's clearly a rush to try to get through the case. Hurry up. We just going to not, we just going to let these people go. Well, this and is not, argument. Come on, man. That's. This is argument on your part, sir. It is it. pure commentary I just want, I just at this point. I want that on the record. I see through it. And your nice see, try, through but I see through it. has absolutely no basis in the <sighs> fact. I know that's what's being done. You Come could on, ask man. these I'm, questions. You could on, ask man. these witnesses the right certain questions, I, and you're I'm not. Far, far from the idiot. They're your witnesses, sir. You believe. So, every, so I'm going to start asking every witness up here that they seem just to mysteriously now not have any cross for it. Have they been coached to answer the way they answer? Because well, you can't find, ask that, but you I can ask them if they've funny. met with anyone ahead of their testimony here funny. today, which you've done funny. with other witnesses. I find it very funny that these are their reports, and now all of a sudden you can, oh, I saw the person in the car. Oh, right. but Mr. Brooks, uh, I saw the breach for something. You oh, to I, don't, delay these I don't recall what they had on. Mr. Brooks, there. And to state the obvious, for those of you that watched the entire trial, a lot of the times the prosecution doesn't cross-examine his witnesses because they say great things for the prosecution. What are they going to impeach those witnesses for? I got to be honest. Leave them. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, no, you go ahead. Um, no, I, I. this entire time, every witness that he's called, I, I genuinely think he got the rest of the prosecution's witness list. And just decided to call all of them because they were fantastic. <laughs> yep. Just yep. just whoever wasn't called by the prosecution. Yep. I, I, I actually think that might have been what occurred. Yep. Yep. I agree. He doesn't I know agree. he doesn't know how to he doesn't have any investigative powers. Yep. And every and single one of those witnesses were great for the prosecution. Just not for him. Why cross-examine them? Why would you? Why would you need to? There's no purpose for you saying this right now. Don't know what they had on. I find that All very. Right. I'm having the jury brought out. I'm instructing you to on, avoid man. the commentary when the jury comes nah, out, or you I, will forfeit your right to be I present. Didn't say you, you, you. Do we pick up potential as to a uh, witness by the name of Abel Lescano? He has prior criminal history. Thank you. So as long as the jury's out, we should probably discuss that. I would like to provide the defendant and the court with a copy. So that had to be that had to be said. So it's the defendant. That's not how it was said. That, that was how I said. You want to run the record back? Yeah, it's it's not going to get. Oh, better. he's lost it. He's gone way off the deep end. There's no other way to put it. Oh, uh, it, it it doesn't get better. Mr. Brooks. I watched the entire I got one, I got one ear there working. I heard that. This on, is man. to benefit on, you so that no, you not. understand Ain't none your of this to benefit witness me, so let's has be clear a prior record. You're going to want to watch this. Your Honor, when I leave the table, I'm away from the courtroom, and I have to elevate my voice. This is the so she alleged record of Abel Lescano. Stop talking. Man. Come on, man. 
Like, I don't know who y'all be thinking y'all fooling. And I'll set the value in terms of value this uh, document. One more interruption and you're going to be removed to the next court. That's what you want to do anyway. It's not what I want to do. Do not interrupt Attorney Opper. So can Your you Honor, tell, I can believe you he has seven prior criminal convictions via OWI 2nd from 1997 and OWI 3rd from 1997. The question and OWI is, did he kick the door open? 2003, criminal trespass to dwelling from Look at those eyes. Right, I need to take a break. This Look man that, right now scary. is having a stare down with me. It's very disrespectful. He pounded his fist. Frankly, it makes me scared. And we're taking a break. Look at that death stare. Oh my God, guys. Oh my God. Yeah. The jury was in the room when, when that happened, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. He's pounding the table. It makes me scared. The judge is saying that about the man on trial. For oh, him. no. The jury's in the room. Lies, lies, lies. The jury's not Oh, there. I'm like, that's yeah. a hell of a thing. The jury's not there at the time. Oh no no no! Like, damn. Not, thank God, thank God! Right. No no no! Because they were discussing a, an a, a upcoming witnesses' criminal history and whether or not the prosecution would be able to use as impeachment and things yes. like that. And she was trying to help him even while he was being disrespectful and like, "Do you want to raise objections about anything to do with these people's testimony?" And he slammed his hand on the table and stared the judge down. And I looked at it on my phone. It didn't have the same impact as it had on my computer through my like louder speakers. Like he really slammed his hand down on the table. That was terrifying, actually. That was terrifying. Oh my yeah, god. That, that says a lot about kind of character and what kind of person you're dealing with. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, yes. Yeah, without a doubt, guys, without a doubt. All right. So this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna call it here. I know that more fireworks happen, but it's been three hours and 15 minutes. And I, this is, you know, I, these three hour streams are not my normal real house. It's usually an hour and a half, maybe two hours, but this is a lot for me. So I want to thank everyone who came out to the stream. I'll start with the people that are not here right now. We had law talk with Mike. Um, we have Miss Mandy. Who else did we have that I'm missing that left? Maybe it was just Law Talk with Mike. We've got Jay Robine Law. We've got Nate, the lawyer. All excellent content creators. If you guys want to stick around for the Super Chats, you're more than welcome to. Um, if not, you know, why don't you sign yourselves out if that makes you, uh, makes you happy? All right, guys. Um, I just want to thank everyone. And uh, Law Talk with Mike on his channel, we've been covering this for the last few days and we're going to continue to do it until this is over. Just because, yeah. you know, if you want to see it live, come check it out. I'll great out. color commentary. Great color commentary. Real quick, uh, Mandy just told me that we have 5,537 people in the chat at one point in time. Thank you all so much. You're, I am eternally grateful. Um, and I also forgot to say we had law talk with Mike here, but we also had Ian Runkle of the Bailey top of the stream. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Ian. Make sure you guys subscribe to him. Go ahead, Nate. Oh, ah, now I forget my elevator pitch. I'm Nate the lawyer. Just put it in Google and, and that's it. The reason why I chose Nate the lawyer because it's easy to remember. Boom. Boom. Nate the lawyer is everywhere. He's on Twitter. He's on YouTube. He's probably more places than I am in the social media sphere. All right, let's hit these super chats. You guys are free to go whenever you want. Uh, Miss Mandy, who are you to you judge me? I can't. I can't <laughs> wait for that to come. That's gonna be. That's what you're gonna say tomorrow. Why? Yeah. I want you to judge me, Your Honor. Oh my God, it's so scary. All right, um, Miss Mandy, thank you so much, guys. Please don't send any more super chats. That way, I can actually get to these ones. Any ones that I don't get to, maybe I'll do a super chat stream tomorrow. But I really want to go hiking tomorrow, so let's try to get through super chats tonight. Idios mio, thank you very much for becoming a lawyer, Chicklet River Shoal. Thank you so much for liking my look today. Thank you for the super chat, um, Elise Couture. Thank you very much for being a lawyer, Chicklet. Chickenhead PK Neely, nice to see you again. Rainforest in the house, happy Friday. Thank you very much. Uh, Jolly John 11, thank you for being a lawyer, Chicklet or Rooster, whichever you prefer to be. India, thank you for being a lawyer, Chicklet. Kimmy Locker, thank you for being a lawyer, Chicklet. River Shoal, thank you for being a lawyer, Chicklet. 
Equality, nice to see you. Hi, looking beautiful as always. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Why are they disregarding his tantrums to keep the trial moving and to protect the record? Because they don't want to call a mistrial. Rhonda Lynn from Tacoma, a foodie made my own um, bolognese spaghetti. Mmm, I love a good spaghetti. Dark Bunny DNR, is there a legal limit he can act a fool? <laughs> Not really. It's all in the judge's discretion. Chicken head PK Neely, this is a word salad. It's confusing. I feel so bad for the judge. Agreed. Agreed. Allison Kirkley reminds me of my middle school kids. Gaslighting. Agreed. Agreed. The jaded, this poor stenographer, they're the real MVP. There's a lot of over-talking. So yes, I can see that. Jordan, nice to see you. If she kicks them out, what happens? It would go straight to closing arguments. Yes. You know, or the state would be begin to do their rebuttal case. Absolutely. The judge repeatedly doesn't follow through on threats, which is why he keeps going on. Agreed. Tanya, welcome to the lawyer chicklets. Welcome to the lawyer chickets, Trisha. Welcome to the lawyer chicklets, Trisha Lynn. Jamie, well, oh, uh, it's just, oh, wait, no, I missed it. <laughs> it just got crazy at the end. Hope you cover. I'll cover the end another day, hopefully tomorrow, maybe after my hike. Can, uh, Kimmy Locker, can an appeal argue that letting him get away with so much in front of the jury is prejudicial? I don't think prejudicing yourself prejudicing, prejudicing yourself. I don't know. I can't say words. I don't think that'll work on appeal. If it does, it will be a case of first impression in which it's found that way for the first time. Maybe this creates that law. I don't know. Thank you so much. Kimmy Locker, squeeby. Do you think if the judge was a man that he would still be the same level disrespectful? No. Love your commentary. Thank you so much, Natalie. Thank you. Thank you. T-pop. He just accused the judge of being unfit in front of the jury at the end, and she ended his di redirect witness. His death glares are, were constant. Mm. Yeah, I think, do we have bets on a potential physical explosion for Mr. Brooks? I don't know. Dr. Fudge, you know he could have helped himself a lot in front of the jury earlier if he just said sorry or similar at some point in any of his ramblings. I agree. Could have gone a long way. Thanks, chicken head. He is being removed. Lord Jesus, I missed all that. Melly, thank you for the super chat. Agree, Ian. I see him calculating how to move forward. He doesn't always make good choices, but he is by no means stupid. Mr. Brooks is not stupid. I agree. I think he's actually a very intelligent person, naturally intelligent, and given different opportunities, might have been uh, a, a formidable opponent in, in the legal arena or the corporate arena. Um, Daniel. Thank you. Ortiz Lopez. Thank you for the super chat. Blasphemy of the day. After being admonished for badgering a witness, how are you even a judge? What in the blue F? Jesus. I'm glad I didn't see that. I think that would have upset me. I really like that judge. Thank you for that. Catalina K. Thank you for being in the lawyer. Check it. Check it. Checklet. Equality. Thank you for the super chat. It's the opposite day every day. That's right. I believe that. Mike Dorado, I really do not blame this sweet pea of a judge. It is not her fault. He is determined to obstruct, and she is just plotting forward. Patrick Liddy, been with Law Talk with Mike for days. Time to show some love to the chicks. Won't be here long, but had to show my support. Thank you, Patrick. You are greatly appreciated. Laura Kay, welcome to the, to the Lawyer Chicklets. Nice to see you. Patrick Gomez, Natalie, Runkle, Emily, at all. He's not worth it. Don't let him provoke you like this. He's toxic. Don't let that toxicity poison you. Thank you for that. Alex G, welcome to the lawyer chicklets. Thank you. Mara W, I hope you cover him badgering the final witness. I'll probably cover it tomorrow. I do like a Saturday stream. Studio, thank you for the Australian $5. He wanted to spend every second he had before going to prison forever controlling Erica by having her show up to court every day, then calling her last. And he was mad that he had, I, I didn't even pick up on that smarty pants. Absolutely. If they call his, whoa, I missed that. Okay. Uh, I'm so late, but want to super chat, a super litigator, love you girl, and plan to listen to the replay. Thank you so much. Wolf Rebel, do you think the state sufficiently proved premeditation for the six separate first degree murder charges? It's a potential that the first few people that were hit by the vehicle, they may not be able to prove premeditation because there's that hot anger that he was under running from 
the confrontation with Miss Erica. So I think there's a small possibility, a small possibility. River Shawl, thank you for the super chat. And I love your Avi. You're such a beautiful lady. Studio, you are so right. Is there anything that can be done to prevent him from using this trial to continue to hurt her? Not much. Facial Rider, ooh, what a name. Welcome to the lawyer chicklets. <laughs> Peggy Cole, I heard she was expecting. Does anyone know if that's true? No, I don't, I don't know. I think you're talking about Miss Erica. I don't know. Oh, by she, I meant the judge. Oh, I thought you were talking about Miss Erica. I don't know. Oh, no. Stress is not good for that. And he's really trying to stress her out. Thank you for the super chat, facial writer. Cat in Virginia. <laughs> he also said tactic agreement once. Oh, instead of tack it agreement. One drink a week. Don't stream anymore. Mike Dorado. Thank you for the super chat. Dealey Moo, thank you for the super chat. The law firm of Petty, Stupid, BS, and Tackett. Well put, well said. Ellen, thank you for the super chat. Let the record reflect EP is an essay victim, single mom, got her CNA, and just publicly testified against her murderous abuse, abuser. Powerful woman. I would like to see what Miss Erica does with her future. I see lots of potential for her. Abba's child. The judge needs to be nominated for the Nobel Peace Prize because he is very cringy. <laughs> Agreed. Agreed. She's a great judge. Jonathan Beatty, thank you for the super chat. I think Mr. Brooks's case for the prosecution is doing wonderful. He's going to get 100% conviction. <laughs> Snap. Thank you for that super chat, Jonathan. <laughs> Kyle, hello. I'm curious how this would all play out during victim impact statements and the sentencing colloquy if he's convicted. Me too. We'll see. I don't think it's going to make much of a uh, difference. Super sticker from Sue's story. Thank you kindly. Jordan, nice to see you again. I'm supposed to be studying for my LSAT in November, but I'm here. Thank you for your coverage of this case. Jordan, get to studying. Get to studying, Jordan. <laughs> Love this combo of Natalie and Runkle. What a trial. Thanks, Sabs McDabs. Cat in Virginia. Do you think he will accept an attorney on appeal? I think he will. He needs to because there's he's way out of his depth. Hey, Debbie Davis, she was minor. He is a registered SO. He is manipulative with control taxes on judge on who controls courtroom. Completely agree. Wow. Yes, baby. Wow. Okay, I'm coming. I'm almost done. Dustin Wilson, thank you for the super sticker. Dark Bunny DNR, please up the court video volume. It was all the way up. Uh, there were certain parts of it that were kind of low. And at one point during the trial, I heard the judge say she was telling the clerk to turn the volume up on some of the mics. So I know that it was low. Loving the super lawyer team up. This was a great stream. Thanks, Doc H. Johnny Cash. He's a typical. Mm, nope. Nope. No. If there was a way to send that back, somebody blocked that person. Mm -mm, no, that's not worth $1.99. Elise Couture, thank you for the super chat. Thankful for learning of Emily D. Baker for all the lovely law tube community. Listen, Emily is so generous. She is so kind. And, um, you know, there's no way that you're not subscribed to her. But if you aren't, go and subscribe. Agreed, Elise. Absolutely. Susanna, thank you for the super chat. Relevancy will be my drinking game. Yeah, because the objection is relevance, not relevancy. Jules O could have had grounds for an appeal if he did have lawyers and got convicted and blame it on his lawyers. Yes, he could. I mean, he he wouldn't get far, I don't think, you know, but he could say ineffective assistance of counsel. That is one of the grounds for appeal. Based, Giga Chad, <laughs> your Avi always cracks me up. Volume is low on video, but high on mic. Sorry that it's uh, next time. Maybe I'll go with the law and crime stream. I try to avoid them because they're not, I don't have any problems with them, but like I've heard they've copyrighted other people. And so I try to avoid them for that reason, but I'll try their stream next time. Sorry guys. Sue Story, welcome to the lawyer chicklets. What shade is your lipstick? It is whoop, Revlon's matte, uh, ultra HD. And I don't know what the, I can't, I think I might've rubbed off the name, but this is it right here. And it's drugstore. You know, I like a little mixture of drugstore and high end. The foundation is NARS. These are mink lashes. Um, faux mink. We're not out here killing mink babies, you know. Um, my contour is NARS. The blush is um, Rare Beauty. And this is Revlon. So I, I like to do high-low. Kate Leslie, welcome to the Lawyer Chicklets. 
Give it Ginger Snap Girl. Nice to see you again. I wonder if he's got the book of revelations because his time is almost up. His witnesses today were heartbreaking. They were very, very heartbreaking. I think he's just trying to manipulate the jury with the Bible, to be honest with you. I think he's bringing it out. I'm a religious man. Guilty verdict incoming. Likely. Drunk Werewolf, thanks for your coverage. I enjoy watching with you. Thank you. Asked about doing a GFV for Erica. Uh, Lady Bug Lisa says, Dystopian asked about doing a G... Oh, a GoFundMe for Erica. Hmm. Let's talk. Let's talk. Let's take a consensus on that. I haven't done a GoFundMe for particular people we've covered, for organizations related to those people, yes, or like donated to them, but... I don't know. Erica seems like a worthy cause. Mm. Dystopian asked about doing a GoFundMe for Erica. Uh, BLYT50, thank you for the super sticker. Whoopsie Daisy, have you noticed if Brooks's tantrums are cyclical? They appear to be more volitional. Infinitely April, welcome to the lawyer chicklets. Occam's razor. Nice to see you again. I think he's trying to prove that the witness didn't notice the others. So how could he notice the people he drove into? Mm -hmm. I, I agree. Someone. Thank you for the super chat. I have a lot of respect for you and I appreciate you taking the time to cover this case. Thank you. Thank you, someone. I appreciate that. Patty Joe Sloss. Thank you. I'm back. Law tube. Love listening to all of y'all. Welcome back. Audrey Smithy. I am so sorry. I ran out of characters on my chat, hun. Please just be prepared because it's going to be a hot mess. And wasn't it? Leland Pell, one. Thank you for the super chat. Spin Gal, eight. Welcome to the lawyer chicklets. Kobe Lewis, why is he spending all of this time on the DV and her when six people are dead and 60 plus other charges? Is he trying to say it's her fault he ran people over or just to abuse her a bit more? Por que no los dos? I think it's a little bit of both. Andrew D'Angelo, how is this case different from the Kyle Rittenhouse trial where he murdered two people? I love what you do, Natalie. I'm seriously asking this question. I'll put some thought in that. I think there's some significant differences here. Um, no one could say in this trial that any of these people were attacking Mr. Brooks. And that was certainly Mr. Rittenhouse's defense. And he ended up being successful and saying that he was acting in self-defense. There, there's no colorable self-defense claim in this case. I would, I would say that. Patty Joe Sloss, thank you for the super chat. Mr. Brooks is still in denial. I haven't heard him speak of himself as anything but the alleged defendant. Alleged? Is this an alleged courtroom? Alleged witness? Alleged boxes of files? Shock ankle chains? Get him, Patty Joe. Get him, Patty Joe. Alyssa Hendry, welcome to the Lawyer Chicklets. Audra Smithy, and thank y'all for everything y'all do here. It has been so great to be able to find law too. Thank you, sweetie. Kashira Fort or Forte, have you ever witnessed someone represent themselves successfully? Love your streams. Yes. And actually, while I was streaming yesterday, my husband sent me the link to a person who represented themselves in a murder trial in my county, in our county that we practiced in back in the 90s or early 2000s. Early, it was 2008, I think it was and represented himself in a murder trial and turned down the plea offer and fired his counsel and was successful. It made the Washington Post. It's so rare. Danielle Bellau or Bellu, thank you very much for the super chat. Preach. That's such a true message. Um, thank you so much. I think we were talking about Erica being a victim and how, you know, to look out for predators. Kimberly, welcome to the war lawyer chicklets. Warrior chicklets? Why not? Miranda Hoik. Hook. You're going to teach me how to pronounce that, hopefully. The male DA, Zach, I think, found out some pretty interesting info that he put into the record at the very end of the day. Make sure you listen to it. And we did. Thank you for the super chat. Mary Phillips, as a mom of a 13-year-old daughter, yes, they absolutely need to understand that, especially in the age of social media. Thank you for all you do. Thank you. Thank you. Ginger Porter, thank you for the super chat. Thank you for your calm demeanor and explanation of issues of law. I'm calm because I'm tired. I'm usually a little bit more hype. Other streams have watched, continue to call the defendant stupid, and I'm unable to continue to watch because it's so negative, an already negative situation. I appreciate your feedback. Thank you, Ginger. Um, Jess, lesson on the DV trial. Always get a lawyer. Agreed, Jess. Thank you. Al Alyssa, thank you. This was for his protection due to the prior order. He was just trying to make her out to be a bad parent. Agreed. Agreed. They were just trying to protect him, and he was trying to open the door. Katie Cotton, welcome to the lawyer chicklets. Coffee, not murder. <laughs> Will Brooks take the stand? 
Likely, yes. Cat in Virginia. She said at one point she didn't tell the cop Brooks punched her because she was so used to it that she didn't see any point of telling the police. Oh, so sad. Alyssa, his mom sent them to him, but this sent, set him off. It was shown later in the day. Yep, we got there. Thank you, Alyssa. Mamie says his grandchild and daughter. So some people are saying that the child they had together has now since had a child. So they're both grandparents. Cheryl, thank you for the super chat. Alleged defendant, right? Doesn't make any sense. He's the actual defendant. Susie B, girl, you're 38. You look my age. <laughs> well, how old are you, girl? <laughs> I'll put it this way. 38 is not old. It's not, you know? Our understanding of age, I think, is changing with time. I watched a video on that. Um, but that could just be my misperception, you know, just because now I'm 38, 38 isn't old. <laughs> I hope the ex gets help for trauma, external wounds, heals, internal wounds, takes longer to heal. I agree. Jonathan, thank you again. They are pics of his daughter and grandchild. Hillbilly on TV. This photo is of his 15-year-old and his kid's newborn kid. Given how he reacts when the court is trying to help him, I can't wait to see his reaction to the guilty verdict. Hitchbot. I'm really concerned for a physical outburst. I'm very, very worried about that. Ashley Tim says, 15-year-old daughter and her new baby. I think he's just trying to show those pictures. Like, look at our family. How could you turn against me? Look at our family. That's what I think he's doing. And it's a thing abusers do. Thanks, Ashley. Equality. Exhibit E. That was from yesterday and quite funny. Patty Joe Sloss, thank you. Nate has it absolutely correct. DB is all about control, gaslighting narcissists, and just wants to hurt the witness and with those baby photos. So sad. Rael, thank you. I wonder just enough if he is going somewhere. Then I start to think if this is just grasping at any control over his victim. Sometimes he is going somewhere, guys. Sometimes he's making valid points, and sometimes he's just trying to control the witness. Terry Sletsky, hey, girl. <laughs> hey, Terry. To lighten it up, Natalie, that is a lovely color for you, the blue-red. I say that respectfully. I thank you very much, Terry. I said, hey, girl, but, you know, Terry could be a lady or a guy, so I should not have said that. So thank you, Terry. I appreciate that. Uh, blue-red is one of my favorite reds, one of my favorites. Instead of, like, I like orange reds, but blue reds are my favorite. Someone, thank you for the super chat. I object to people not liking this video. Just saying. Like the video. Exactly. Patricia, according to the prosecution, the photos were not from Erica, but from someone she gave them to. I believe it was given to his mother by someone else. I think that's right. I think that's right. Aaron, Aaron Sizek. Like, giving pictures of the grandchildren and the great-grandchildren to the grandmother, that's not having contact with the father. It's not. But he is so narcissistic in my opinion. He's so narcissistic. He thinks that she still wants him. This part is pretty intense, but it will get much worse later. <laughs> it did. Lili, welcome to the lawyer chicklets. Mamie Yoakum, thank you. He is lying in the DA reports. He tried to call her collect 37 times and she did not answer. Good for you, Miss Erica. Keep going, Miss Erica. We're proud of you. Nigel, welcome to the lawyer chicklets. Marika, thank you. I spent all morning watching this with Mike and John, and now I get to enjoy this hot mess again with Nat and Nate. You're so kind. Derek, welcome to the Lawyer Chicklets. Nigel, okay, both John and Mike are here. Now it's a party, and it was. Nathan Art, F in the chat for this guy. Victoria McWilliams, don't you know the public defender he fired is thrilled he's not in the three-ring circus? Oh, I absolutely know he is. Absolutely. Cat in Virginia. He doesn't know the judge is trying to help him. He doesn't. Gibbons. I think at the end, the judge is going to give him the broomstick. Syntax. Two, 600. 2,600. I'm listening to the whole thing today. I don't know why I'm subjecting myself to this again. It's like a train wreck. I agree. I agree. Evan B. Grounds for the sustained. <laughs> oh, my Lord. Nana. Times two. I hope your grandbabies are good. Please, please get to the end. It's a doozy. I did. I did. You guys were paying me money to say, stop stopping the video. Get to the end. Work pro And tomorrow I'll, or Sunday, I'll deal with the end of the video. Work product privilege covers reasons for dropping. Hmm. Yeah, they can't tell why they, you know, why he dropped them. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with that. Okay, so your voice levels are all different. 
Love you all, but please don't shout. Some of us are wearing headphones and have the volume up to hear the softest. I saw your comment during the stream and I will um, next time put everyone's vo mic volume at the same level and hopefully that will help. <sighs> Is Ginger here? Wink at John. <laughs> Kathy Malloy. John should wear a red wig on the next live stream. He should embrace the ginger. Sister Babylon, my aunt, judge for 20 plus years, is watching this with me mad. The amount of angry, swear-laden legalese being thrown around my living room. Say hi to your auntie for me. Ryan Blackhawk says it gets worse. Nice to see you, Ryan. Allie, he sounds like he is talking in the jail yard. Yeah, so sometimes he doesn't, but sometimes he's like talking like, you know, he's speaking to a contemporary and it's not appropriate. Heather Lopez, it gets worse. And the judge puts something damning, puts something damning on the record. Mm. Don't know why everyone wants to rush y'all. We're on this commentary channel to hear your thoughts. Thanks for what you do, Sarah Miles. I don't take it in a negative way. It's okay. They're just excited to get there. Alyssa Hendry, thank you for the super chat. This really showed me sadly what happened the day of the parade, his anger, and he didn't control it. He acts. Yes. I understand it more and more the more I watch the trial. Richard Anderson, nice to see you again. Through his behavior and impulsiveness in the courtroom, he has convinced the jury that he will reoffend. He clearly cannot control his emotions. Fair take. Kimberly Smith. Judge takes an early recess later due to his stare. Yeah, we got there. Yeah. Science geek. At least we know his name now. Darbo Brooks. Taylor Flock. Hi, Taylor. Nice to see you again. The prosecutor makes a further record at the very end of today. He explains Brooks tried to call Erica 37 calls, times from the jail. She declined each one. He's such a... If this is true, then he is such a liar. He really, really is. S. Ansel, thank you for the super chat. He is an egocentric person who doesn't like being told what to do. He is also a hashtag court jester. S. Ansel is an old school chicklet. When people were acting up in court, I used to call them a court jester, but I dropped it because I'm not a consistent person. Scout Gallant, how mad he got here showed his guilt. Thinking about Cake, you were giving him too much credit. I think he just read the public defender's preliminary notes and is trying to guess what their strategy was. I, I think that's true. I think that's, I think that's probably true. And I am probably giving him too much credit. Steiner, Oregon. Thank you. It will be interesting if, if Brooks's mother testifies. She said things about the ex-girlfriend in interviews. So sorry for the ex-girlfriend. I hope he doesn't call his mom. Diamond Boy, nice to see you. New here, but not to law. Practice in Texas. Oh, hi. Ignis of law doesn't mean it does not apply. Absolutely right. Welcome, Diamond Boy. Nice to meet you. Lindsay Milan. Could you cover the First Amendment auditors on your channel? Very similar to Sovereign Citizens. I have covered them from time to time. Um, but, you know, the thing is that sometimes I agree with their right to film in certain places that they are. And then I get negative comments from, like, my supporters. And then sometimes I disagree with them. And then I get a deluge of negative comments from the, so the First Amendment auditors. I'm never going to not tell the truth. So sometimes I just don't feel like dealing with all that. But you know what? I might give them another shot. Phases. Thank you. Every time DB speaks, he proves his guilt. He is a fool. Mm. Jessica Phelps for Runkle. I'll be sure to, maybe I'll cash out him that $2. <laughs> Thanks, Jessica. That's it. That's it? <laughs> Woo! Everybody say thank you to Miss Mandy. Thank you all so much for hanging out. There's still over 2,000 of you here. What's wrong with you guys? Go to bed. All right, everybody. Thank you so, so much for making this one of our best live streams yet. Um, I hope to see you guys in the future. Let me know what you guys want to see in the future. We might do a Brooks wrap-up stream tomorrow if I have the energy, but look at me. I may not. Everybody take care of yourselves and say hi to your grandmas for me. Bye.